What's up, everyone? We are back for our second part of the show. I'm going to bring in Smoothing Lou. Smoothing Lou? Yes, Smoothing <laughs> Lou. Right? Smoothing? Soothing. Soothing. What did I say? Smoothing? Smoothing. Smoothing <laughs> things out? Yeah, I like to do that. Never know. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's been done. Smoothing? I like that. Yeah. You got your smoothing over, Lou? I try. Try as much as possible. That's what we are. That's what <laughs> we do. That's what we do. That's exactly right. Yeah. Shall I get the loft started? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why not? Let's get let's get it done. All right. Can get the loft started here. I'm ready. Hang on. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Layton's Loft. I am J5. Uh, I am not Layton. Nope. He is actually stuck in traffic, <laughs> and he will be here with us shortly. Now, shortly could be from 5 minutes, 10 yeah. minutes, 25 minutes. We're yep. just hoping before 5 o'clock. I have the over. Um, <laughs> you have the, you're taking the over? I'm taking the over. You, yeah. But um, it's 4.50. That's that's the time, 4.50 p.m. Okay. I'm taking the over. Um, we can do the interview. We have a guest today. We can do the interview today. It's no oh, problem. Yeah. I have you, Lou. That's all that yeah. matters. Yeah. I know this is going to be more, uh, a podcast, so a lot of people can't see, but I did get a haircut. And yeah. It's, uh, Looks good. Lou, too. Lou, you got a haircut, too. Right? A haircut, too, yeah. Yeah, look at that. We both uh, make sure we're, we're synced. Sync. Yep. <laughs> so... I want to talk about something I teased about uh, in last night's episode of Vintage Breaks. We recently purchased a collection. Actually, we purchased it yesterday. yesterday? Was it yesterday? Yes. yes, it was yesterday. We purchased it. Uh, a lovely couple came in with this binder that I will show you in a little bit. Um, nobody has any idea what's in it. All I can tell you is that um, it's... They just walked in. Yeah. Well, no. I made an appointment, okay. but... Yeah, yeah. They came in and they just wanted to sell. I already spoke with them a couple of times before this, and um, they're very excited to have a professional look at it. Um, which is, of course, Layton. He <laughs> he saw the, the entire binder and uh, made them an offer. They were very happy, and then we got the deal. So, Lou, make sure you tell everybody where to go to get uh, get an entry in our giveaway today. Yes, um, there are going to be two shows each, two forms of this stream on the Vintage Breaks Facebook page and the Vintage Breaks YouTube page. You want to be on the one where the show is full screen, the second one that went up, and you comment on there, and your comments will be included in our giveaways for today. Or you can go to the Layton's Live Facebook page and uh, comment there. Everybody in the Layton's Live fa Facebook page gets entered into the giveaway at the end of the show, too. So make sure you're on the full screen version, not the one with the chat on the right-hand side. You can go there after we're done and watch the breaking for tonight. That's why we do it, making an easy transition. But you want to go to the full screen feeds on uh, Vintage Breaks Facebook page and on Vintage Breaks YouTube. Thank you, Lou. I couldn't have said it any better. That was perfect. Tyler says your job is awesome. <laughs> so I want to talk about Lou today is um, a little bit, just a little bit. I would say I would take 10 minutes, no more than that, because I really want to talk about the collection. Yep. Uh, it's about our website, vintagebreaks.com. They are, Ernie. They're dope. His comments are dope. <laughs> <laughs> it's vintagebreaks.com. Now, Lou, how can I bring it up to the page? You want vintagebreaks.com? Yeah. You wanna, can you do that for us? I can do that. Give me one second. Great. And I'll walk through everybody. And Lou could be my, my right-hand man on this. What's up, Chef? Starting a watch party. I like it. Yeah, yeah, we're on the Vintage Breaks Facebook page. Guys, this is our website for those who are new. And for those who are, you know, our regulars or OGs, as we call them. You guys <laughs> already know a lot about the website. You guys have seen the previous website from three years ago. Compared to now, it's like mind-blowing. The difference. Like, it's huge. But It's gorgeous. Uh, 
yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys about the bonuses and how they work. And also a couple of new features that we added to this new website, which the new people may not know. Um, and that is, of course, we'll start with the, uh, what do you call it, the, the bar on top, which has all our home button, all products, all sports. You also have VB South, VB West. Shout out to Chris Gilmore for VB South and Charles Gilliatt for VB West. Contact us and the FAQ, a very important page that everybody tends to skip. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> read. If you guys have questions on how this works, if you have questions about shipping, questions about anything, majority of those answers you'll find in the FAQ page. If you want to contact us, please feel free to call us or email us. It is there for you to uh, to get and um, has our schedule. We try to update as much as we can, but we talk about break credits, shipping information, international shipping, incentives, refunds, everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Please check it out. All the way at the bottom, Lou, all the way at the bottom, you will have our contact information right there. Get in touch. Email us, Sam at .com. Here's our main contact. I feel uh, like White just highlighting all the all stuff you're talking about. <laughs> for general questions, Sam will take care of you. For shipping questions, uh, VB shipping 459 at gmail.com. That is the email to use. Right now, we do have Emily uh, looking those through, um, but it could be other folks in the office that could take care of that as well. In the future. In the future, yes. So that is our content. Of course, our phone number is right there as well. Um, just hit two on the option, and it'll, it'll come straight to us so we can help you out. Great. So that is our FAQ. Next. Uh, Lou, let's go back to the home page. Por favor. There yes. we go. If you scroll down, Lou. Keep going. There we go. Keep going. There it is. The good old bonus meter. <laughs> this has been integrated into our website. We're very proud of this. Uh, we have worked diligently with our developer to make sure this is looking perfect. And it's still not perfect. We're still adding more things to it, believe it or not. Uh, but the bonus meter, this is how it works. So, Lou, if you scroll down just a little bit more, there you go. Those are some of the bonuses that are running right now. Every bonus has an increment of different price values. For example, the $3 bonus that we have, if you spend $3 at checkout, you're going to receive one entry into this bonus. This is going to end on March 15th at 11 p.m. Anybody who spent $3 during your checkout, you get your entry, randomize the list. And if you want to know what prizes to get, Lou, you can actually hit prize detail and it'll tell you the prizes. First place is going to get a $50 break credit to our website. Second place will get a 62 Tops Baseball separate spot. Third place will get a 1993 Tops First Series Baseball Pack. An I actual unopened pack to get Derry Jr. rookie card, hopefully. Do you have to do anything when you spend the three dollars or does this automatically happen automatically happen you don't have I to know. worry about it and when you do check out you're going to get confirmation of which bonuses you um, are eligible for so you'll get this in the checkout it's like a little receipt there um so if you click out of here uh lou if you spend more for example the 250 dollar bonus that we have here if you spend 250 dollars at checkout you're going to receive one entry into this bonus we are it is a one week long bonus, Lou. Anyone mm. who spends two fifty will get automatically entered. If you spend five hundred, you get two entries and so on and so on. This is gonna be for a winner take all. Only one person is gonna get Ooh. these prizes. Wow. And this ends this Sunday at midnight. One person is going to receive after the random a five hundred dollar break credit to vintagebase.com. It is as good as cash. You're also going to get a 2020 Optic Football Cello Pack. Looking for those big rookies. 2020, Dougie. Uh, Joe Burrow. Uh, Tua. Tua. Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert. Who, who won Rookie of the Year. Right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, you're also going to get a 57 Toss Basketball Separate Mixer Spot. As you guys know, we have a 57 Toss Basketball Separate on our website. A chance for someone to land on that Bill Russell rookie card. Ooh. Which is like five digits in that grade we have it at. Wow. And also a 500 high roller spot, which is at, you see at the bottom there, the 500 high roller spot. You click on that, Lou. 
the big prize for that one. Anybody who spends five hundred dollars at checkout gets an entry. We need a thousand entries to fill it up. Once it does, we'll randomize it. First person on top is gonna get that sixty-one tops Mickey Mantle PSA four. Gorgeous Mickey Mantle card right there. Uh, looking all heroic. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. Now, can you accumulate your spending to get into this five hundred dollar spot, or does that have to be five hundred dollars at one point? It has to be in one checkout. Now, you may say, well, that's a lot of money, J5. I don't have $500 to spend. Yeah. No problem. We have small bonuses or bounties or other incentives that we actually give you a free spot into this bonus. So you can only find out when you watch live during our show. That is the best time to find out. We have different games that we play throughout the live show, like uh, wheel spins. We have uh, briefcases with prizes inside at random um, we have bounties and some of those bounties carry free spots into these high roller bonuses as we call it so there's different ways of getting in without spending five hundred dollars to check out nice and of course one last one the after party bonus event so uh lou we had our big event this past uh what two weeks ago on february 28th we call this the after party so this ends at uh march uh, 26 it's a Friday mm -hmm. we'll be going live we're going to give away for anyone who spends a hundred dollars to check out we're gonna give away three prizes first place is gonna get a fifteen hundred dollar break credit to wow. vintagebreaks.com second place is gonna get a winner's choice either a 2019 Obsidian football box on open or a 2020 Bowman Sapphire baseball box or a 2019 prison basketball hanging box second place gets to choose the prize third place is going to get 250 dollars of break credit this is our after party bonus and you have to spend a hundred dollars to get in however there are different ways of getting in i must explain to you that right now lou today layton usually gives away seven prizes on every show right all you have to do is comment on the layton's loft chat here which you guys are seeing right now um, what we're going to do is the top seven, after we randomize the list, Dougie Fresh is keeping track of all, all, uh, entries. Right. First place. No, actually, I can't tell you first place because I haven't <laughs> gotten to it yet. Um, oh, first okay. place, I will announce in a little bit. Second place is going to get a free spot in our 1965 tops baseball set break, which is going to be live shortly. Third through seventh are going to get free spots into our after party bonus. Ooh. So you don't have to spend a hundred dollars. All you have to do is just chat it up. Uh, and I believe Lou, if you start a watch party, you get double the entries, correct? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, you had a watch party and then in our comments on the vintage, on the Layton's Loft Facebook page or the Vintage Breaks Facebook page with the full screen video of the show and the Vintage Breaks YouTube channel with the full screen of the show, you put hashtag watch party. And we do it on the Honest System. We're hoping everybody's cooperating. But. I hope so. Yep. All right. I finished and it's 445. That is perfect timing. Really. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So now let's get to the big juicy reveal. And then I'll explain to you what first place is going to get for today's giveaways. All right, Lou, let's switch up. Let's go to the big camera, the, the show and tell camera, I like to say. Uh, gonna take, I'm going to turn this off. Take okay. feed. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this by their fresh, fresh collection of 1939 and 1940 Playball sets. Holy cow. Yes. So that just, these people just, they made an appointment, but they came in and you had no idea it was in the binder. <laughs> I wish it worked that way. But no, okay. no, no, that's not the case. Uh, okay. She sent me pictures. She gave me a oh, number right. she all had. Right. She wanted a preliminary evaluation, which I provided for her. Um, but this, like the entirety of the, of the binder, we didn't, we didn't get to see it through pictures. We only saw a handful. Right. So she just wanted an idea. And so when she came here and saw Layton, boom, he huh. just saw everything. He's like, yep, we want this collection. We made an offer after he went through all the cards. And um, and she was happy, and we got it. So here's the thing. The collection itself belonged to the gentleman's father mm -hmm. who got it from a family friend, I believe. That's what it was. 
We got Todd's attention. Todd's really into this. Stuff. Oh, Todd's in. Oh, okay, okay. Let me get Todd's attention. So I wanted to mention, since I only showed what the big reveal was, Dougie, first place in the giveaway tonight is going to be a 1940 Playball Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Wow. A Hall of Famer from the 1940 Playball set that's in the back here. Holy cow. Layton's going to choose a Hall of Famer. He'll be here shortly. And the then, Hall of Famer yet to be determined. Yes, yet to be determined. So you guys, mm -hmm. all you got to do is chat it up on Layton's loft there. So the ones I wanted to show you, um, the one thing I wanted to show you is that the gentleman's father had no control of this. When he got it, this is the way he received it. But the family kept the binder for many years. Yeah. Every single card in the 1939 Playball Lou has been stamped. Stamped? Stamped. And let me show you by, what I mean by stamped. As you can see, it has the actual dates in the May 9th, 1941. Stamped by the manufacturer? I don't know. Oh, interesting. I, it could be by the store that was selling it. It could have been like a, a giveaway. I don't know. I'm not really yeah. sure. <laughs> but the other thing is that in the back, the gentleman also put his initials on most of the cards. There you go. Yep. Which is JR. Yep. JR on most of these. So they have been stamped and there is uh markings of the initial again we don't know how or why but that is the way they had it and we just had to accept it for what it was <laughs> but the ones i wanted to show you lou which i think our uh our viewers are going to be very happy with is of course and let me just take it out from here the first big reveal there is joe dimaggio oh. hey joe there he is. Mr. Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Very <laughs> classic pose. Everybody loves his card. 1939 Playboy Joe DiMaggio. And there's the back. As you can see, there's a little bit of writing on it right there. And then JR on the top right corner. Yep. And stamped, of course. So <laughs> we are going to get these uh, that card graded by PSA. I guess if you guys know PSA, it's just going to sell more in a PSA slot. Sure, right. So we, we had this on the show last week, yeah. Exactly, which I think Lee is going to talk a little bit more about it today. Uh, and the other card I wanted to show you, Lou, that was part of this set as well. Let me just find it. Besides, you know, there's other Hall of Famers in this set. Sure. But the two biggies is Joe DiMaggio. And he's hiding. There he is. Mr. Teddy Williams. Uh, and I yeah, believe, I him too, yeah. I believe this is his rookie card, if I'm not is mistaken. It? Dougie, can you? 1939 Playable Ted Williams. Is that his rookie Daniel card? Daniel Williams rookie is in the 39 set, yeah. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Stamped May 9th, 1941. Yes. Thank you, Dougie. There's the back, JR on the top right. Yep. So that is the uh, collection. Does the collection have different dates stamped on them, or is it all one date? No, it all, so far it all says May 9th, 1941. Interesting. Yeah, so that day. You could see a kid so. stamping on the day he got them. You could see that. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. But that's a 39. Oh, Todd says Mo Greenberg is in there. Oh, yes. Oh, Greenberg yes. and Moberg. I'm sorry, Moberg. I'm sure there's a lot of Hall of Famers. But we get to the next set, which is a 1940. Mm -hmm. Now, I can assure you there, <laughs> there are no, there's no writing on these cards. However, however, it seemed like it was part of... <laughs> Matthew says that's the date PSA received it and was still waiting on them back. <laughs> that's hilarious. The 1940 play. Dougie, give Matthew a second entry for that. <laughs> Dougie, give Matthew Townsend a second entry for that. He deserves it for that. Yeah. He deserves it for that. <laughs> so, as you can see on the Joe DiMaggio card, Lou, the corners have been 
pretty much seen better days. And that's because they were inside a album. You know those albums that have those four corners to hold the yeah. card? That's what it was. Mm-hmm. But it seems like it was just there for a long time or the person put a little bit of glue in there so it won't move or it won't leave the yep. pocket easily. Oh. Yeah. So all of these cards have that corner damage. You can also see the toning as well. Yep. Of where it's been. So there's Joe DiMaggio and the bats, of course, clean as a whistle there. Nice. Because they've been protected. It was in the album the whole time. It's just the front of the card has those corner issues. And the other... Uh, uh, psh, got so many Hall of Famers here. Red <laughs> Ruffing. Who else am I looking at here? Oh, of course. Who doesn't want to see Teddy Williams? Who doesn't want to see? There's Teddy. Looking young. Another yeah. classic. Uh, yeah. There is Teddy Williams. There's the back. Nice and clean. Just a little yep. bit of edge wear corner as usual. Beautiful. But yes, this is the collection that she brought us. We were happy to evaluate it, of course. Sure. Are any of those complete set or are they just parts of sets? Uh they both they both are, uh, they seem to be full sets. Yeah, I think they're full sets. Nice. Yeah, I couldn't go wrong. Also on here you got Walter Johnson. Oh. Big train. Big train. Walter Johnson here. Let me show you guys in the nineteen forty. There he is. This one's a little beat up on the corner as well. Walter Big Train Johnson. <laughs> Great nickname, Big Train. And right next to him, Grover Cleveland Alexander, another Hall of Famer. Lots of baseball history there. Was that his nickname, Old Pete? I don't know. I didn't know that. Wait, wait. all right, well. So guys in the chat, which Hall of Famer do you think Lane is going to choose to give away tonight? If you know the set, you can well, also smart give of you. That was smart of you not to ask which one you're going to get. <laughs> oh, you want to get. Which one would you like to get that's not Ted Williams, Walter Johnson, you know, the big guys. <laughs> I mean, there's that's a lot of Hall of Famers. So which yeah. one do you think Lane is going to choose to give away tonight? You can Google 1940 Playball set and you get a whole checklist. There's Carl Hubble. There's Mel Ott. The Walter Johnson would be nice. I, I bet it would be. It would be, Lou. Definitely would be. What are people saying? Jimmy Fox. That's a good one, too. Uh, can I find him, though? Lou, do you uh, have you heard a lot about these 3940 Playball sets? No, I don't know much about the play ball sets. But, although, interestingly enough, I, for some reason, I recognize the back of the cards. I don't, the way the back of the cards are set up. I'm not sure where that comes from. Oh. And, of course, the 1941 play ball actually introduces uh, color. There is color in those cards. Um, the 1940 just has this nice border. It has a baseball bat or glove at the bottom. Yep. With the person's name. Mo Berg as a Hall of Famer. Oh, Bert fascinates me. Yeah. Rick Lucian would like a home run baker. Leo de Rocher from Camp Benno. It's Hank Greenberg with Nick Mattiacci. George Sessler from James Actor. What's up, James? The threat is on here. So, yeah, everyone wants Ted. You know, everyone wants Ted. Yep. Or Joe DiMaggio, right? Yeah, of course. Well, I could tell you safely that you're not going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good. Kill a little of the suspense. <laughs> you know, hate to break your hearts there, but. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, I, I was so happy. The threat does George Sisler. Oh, George Sisler, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nancy Flamer and Color just permitted color change on a photo. Yeah, Daniel, pretty much. Yeah, just a little added color on him. Uh, so yeah, the guys, that was the collection we purchased yesterday. We were very excited to show it off yesterday. But I Excellent. told Lane, no, do not show it off until you get to Lane's Loft because it's great content. <laughs> and I'm sure. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of uh, comments on this, but um, to give away a Hall of Famer from 1940 Playball yeah. set of this collection, yeah. We couldn't do that last night. It was inter- It's interesting that you break up a set, too, because you think some of the value of be keeping these cards together in a set. Exactly. exactly. But we're doing it for you guys. 
Yeah, for, night. For tuning in and watching the show or listening to the show, if you're listening to it on a podcast form. Well, now, that, now that's on the internet, I want, I want to take a picture of a couple of these. Uh, okay, just be quick. Yeah, no, I'm not going to take them out. I just want to... Yep. So, so, you can, so you want to get your friends in here and have them make a comment and get involved in this giveaway that could win a Hall of Famer from one of these two sets. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go back to full full frame here, Lou. Okay. All right. Oh, man. Well, I'm so happy that we got that collection. So who else is in the off list? It's nice. not going to be Joe DiMaggio. It's not going to be Ted Williams. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many Hall of Famers. I mean, I yeah. don't know. Who Ladies, else on the list that won't be given away? That won't be given away? Yeah. I, I don't know about Hank Greenberg or Jimmy Fox. Don't know. Uh, Mel Ott could be in that borderline. Mel Ott could be there. Yep. Uh, that's a 50 50, I would say. Lane will choose either. So, but definitely not Walter Johnson. Um, you know, listen, if I get a free Hall of Famer from 1940 play, play ball set, <laughs> I, I'm just happy. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I wish you guys in the chat good luck because I know I'm not winning <laughs> a 1940 <laughs> play ball card. So, uh, luck to you guys. When did that come in? The binder? Yeah. When yes, did you, yesterday. When did you call it yesterday? Oh, wow. Yeah, literally. She, uh, the couple walked in here at uh, six. 6? Oh, yeah. 6 o'clock. Holy cow. And they left at 7 o'clock. Yeah, and we got it done. I think that's when I announced it on the chat last night during the show. 7-ish right. around there. Should we bring our guest in, or we give late another minute? Uh oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> we, I forgot we had a guest. Uh, no, yeah, let, let's uh, let's bring in Greg. All right, let's bring in Greg. Greg, welcome to the program. How you doing today? I'm Lou. That's J Five. Leighton is stuck in traffic. Hey, Greg. I hear you. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> so, Where Greg, uh, were you able to listen to the story or the collection I just talked about? I just caught the tail end of it. Oh, okay. Well, are you familiar with the 1939 and 1940 Playball set? No, I'm not. Oh, uh, okay. So I have my Dougie here is taking uh, pictures, but... Yeah. Um, oh, thank you. There you go. But I'm sure you heard of Joe DiMaggio and Ted Williams. For sure. <laughs> yeah, these are... So the 1939 Playball set has Teddy Williams' rookie card. Oh, wow. And did you just open that up right now? Yeah, I don't know. Lou, you want to... Yeah, uh, this was part of a collection that they bought at Vintage Breaks, which is in New Jersey. And uh, people would contact them from time to time and say, you know, my, I found a collection in the attic or my father had a collection and would like to sell it. And they brought it to uh, Vintage Breaks in a binder. And we just spent the last few minutes going over it. Apparently, it came in yesterday afternoon. And today on the show, we're giving away one of the Hall of Famers from one of these two sets. Awesome, man. Yeah. I don't know if I can compete with that excitement, but uh, <laughs> see what I can do. Uh, Greg is uh, Greg Larson is the author of uh, Clubby, a minor league baseball memoir, and uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Greg, it's really, really interesting. I was just looking through. I read a couple articles uh, about you. One from your hometown, by the way. Read that one, oh, and that's yeah. where I got all the fun stuff. All right, so let's uh, set up the book. You uh, tell people how you tell people about your role in the minor leagues and how the book came about. Yeah. After I graduated college, I got a job as a clubhouse attendant with the Aberdeen Ironbirds short season, the then short season single A affiliate for the Baltimore Orioles, now high A affiliate for the Orioles. And I was a clubby for them for two seasons. Uh, I grew up thinking that I was going to be a major leaguer. But as you saw in that article, I bet 0 0.091 my senior year of high school. Um, nobody wants to mention my 375 on base percentage, by the way, which was not included in that article I want to point out. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I no baseball skill whatsoever, but I always dreamed of being part of the game. And then lo and behold, all of a sudden I'm in a clubhouse and there's this strange dynamic of I'm the guy washing the job jock straps. I'm the guy cutting the veggies. And I realize I'm making three times as much money as the guys in the clubhouse. And yet I still want to be them. I still want to be a player on the field just like them. So it's this, yeah. it's a huge central dynamic in this book. All right. Th this is fascinating. I worked for a couple of years for the Lowell Spinners that were in the New York Penn League mm, as well. Yeah. And one of the things I found fascinating about it is it is such a mishmash 
of people and personalities and people in different places in their life. In uh, June, uh, there'd be the baseball draft, and these guys would show up in Lowell, and I'm sure in Aberdeen as well. And you got some guys from uh, big-time college programs who are drafted, who are coming in to play a couple weeks so they can get their feet settled. And you've got guys who were at their high school prom just two weeks ago who are coming in and playing. And you've got minor leaguers, uh, minor leaguers among the coaching staff. You've got major leaguers on the way down. It's a very wild dynamic, and people don't understand that these players coming in aren't making a ton of money. I'm not surprised you were making more than most of the players. But that those clubhouses in the New York Penn League, because of those differences in personalities and backgrounds, are fascinating places. Oh, yeah. I mean, when we went to the playoffs my second season, I had a long argument with the front office just to get champagne for the guys <laughs> because more than half of them weren't of age to drink. So that, that, that was like a huge problem for them legally. Um, <laughs> and, you know, even the clubhouse... The facilities in the New York Penn League. I I was at Ripken Stadium. Actually, lived in the equipment closet one summer yep. just to save on rent. <laughs> it was just me. Ask, so you actually moved into the the equipment clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, that's how I was sucked into that world. I got. I was in the the equipment closet, a ten by twelve room, no windows, just pine tar, rosin everywhere. I, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get out of this with my sanity intact. But Ripken Stadium had probably the best facility in the New York Penn League. Some of those Mahoning Valley, yep. Tavia guys would come back from road trips with bed bugs, literally. Yep. Uh, so I was grateful for the facilities there, but now that's why it's a high A affiliate, the Ironbirds. Were you a traveling clubhouse attendant with the team or just at home? I traveled the second season. Uh, the guys saw me as something of a good luck charm um, when we were on a playoff hunt and they actually let me go on the field and take batting practice Alan Mills, 12-year major leaguer, pitched batting practice to me like he wanted to add me to the list of his illustrious strikeout vi victims he's had in his career. Mark McGuire, Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, Greg Larson. <laughs> he let me know that I could not handle his slider and his hard fastball on the inside. But, I mean, that was a blast. I wore a jersey for some of the games, um, warmed up the right fielder one game. It was I wouldn't trade it for anything. All right. As I think you mentioned, I forget which article I saw that you mentioned it in is these. I know that these clubhouse attendance positions don't come open. They are basically passed down. They're they're covered in positions. So how did you end up? You were from Minnesota at the time, right? How did you end up in, in Maryland, uh, a clubhouse attendant for the Orioles? Affiliate? Yeah, I grew up in Minnesota, which is hockey country, not baseball country. And even then, I couldn't get a starting position on the uh, Division Three college that I was going to. Yep. I got cut from that school in a matter of 48 hours during tryouts week. And um, so I transferred to a Division One school called Winthrop in South Carolina. And they gave me a Division One baseball scholarship, but it was a scholarship for washing jock straps with them. So then when I graduated, that was the only job experience I had. And it just so happens, I had no idea how rare this was. Just so happens that right when I graduated, this clubby job opened up on Aberdeen Ironbirds, their website. And it just was a fluke that that was the only experience I had. And that job happened to open up. And I had no idea how perfectly the stars aligned until after the fact when people were like, now, how did you get this job again? And yeah. I said, on a job board online. And they look at each other like, who the hell is this guy? And what is he doing in our clubhouse? Now, in Lowell, because Lowell, uh, the ballpark in Lowell is very close to um, UMass Lowell, and a lot of the players stayed in the dorms uh, during during that period. Mm -hmm. And this roster becomes, and I'm sure in Aberdeen, it was probably more, there were probably sponsors and foster families for these for these kids in many cases, right? They right. Lived, yeah. But it becomes a very closed environment, and you as the clubby are a conduit for a lot of things for these kids, especially the underage kids with maybe some alcohol and, you know, whatever other trouble they can get into. And that's that had to present some opportunities for you. Oh, yeah. A lot of financial opportunities, particularly with memorabilia. I mean, I would. So I had a deal with the stadium clubhouse supplier, the, the beer supplier. Um, I would give him a couple of bats, a couple of baseballs at the beginning of the season. And he would load up, load me up with a bunch of expired Bud Lights that, you know, <laughs> he just would tell us his, his the Bud Light factory that just fell off the truck. Yeah. And so what I would do, I would take that those cases of Bud Lights. And then let's say Staten Island Yankees coming to town, Lowell Spinners coming to town. I go to their coaching staff and say, hey, you guys want some booze? Uh, and they say, sure. I say, you give me some caps and some gear. And then because that was from another team, the caps and gear that they give me, 
uh, it was more valuable to the stadium beer supplier in Aberdeen. Sure. So then I would trade the beer to the other teams. I'd get the gear, trade it to the beer supplier, and then I would take tips on the top and I'd have extra beer left over for myself and our coaching staff so that I was living high off the hog all That's season long. Leighton joined us. Leighton Sheldon. Sheldon is with us. And uh, we're talking with Greg Lock, author of Clubby, minor league mem baseball memoir. We're just uh, going over our old days in the uh, New York Penn League. Very cool, Greg. Well, thanks uh, again for joining us today. Apologize for uh, being late. Uh, you know, um, this is the, the life we live, the life we have chosen. But uh, thanks for joining us today. Really looking forward to checking out your book. And honestly, the first few minutes here just to kind of be like a guest on our own show, just to listen to you for me being a few minutes late. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it sounds like you just, if I may, being late to the party here, it sounds like in the beginning we're at the right place at the right time, but yet, you know, you, you created your own luck by looking on the message boards as opposed to waiting to someone to come to you. That's very true. I mean, it was a perfect um, opportunity plus preparation. I was... You know, it was 2011. There just weren't a lot of job opportunities at that time. And I thought, man, I could do a lot worse than working in professional baseball. Yeah. And, you know, I think the character development, because I have to look at myself and I look at the guys on the team as real people, but they're characters in the book as well. And when I look at my character in the book, I turn cynical. Like, I don't feel cynical about the game now, but over time, I grew to see the game in ways that I didn't expect. Like, I would just wait for the games to get over because then I could finish scrubbing up the laundry quicker after the game um you know an out was an out i didn't care who won or lost at a certain point started chewing tobacco grew a crappy mustache lost a bunch of weight and um i, I think that transformed my experience of the game you know i, I came into it a little bit starry-eyed maybe a little bit naive and i saw holy crap there's a whole world not just beyond what we see on a major league field but there's a whole world beyond what we see on a minor league field and it completely transformed my understanding of the game, I think, for, a, for the better and for a deeper relationship with the game. It's funny, that day-to-day -day grind, and I remember working in Lowell at the time, and there would be a rain delay, and it would just kill you. You'd, just be, you'd, you'd be on the eighth game oh, of yeah. a home stand, and it, that rain delay would come, and, and teams going on the road, and you're just going, man, I just want to get this game over with. I just want to go home. You know, you oh, for spend sure. too much time at the ballpark. But the thing is, when you get back to the ballpark the next day, it's kind of renewed. You always get that feeling back again. Yeah, you almost forget about anything that happened the day before, bad, good. It's like a fresh start. And that even happens between seasons, you know. There was some, there was some staff that Alan Mills, for example, our pitching coach, he was on the team both years that I was on the team. We're the only staff that left over. And, um, you know, in the offseason, I didn't hear from guys. But then when you show up, during the season, if there are any guys that are coming back from the last season, it's like they've always been there. You just fall back into something easy. And I think there's something beautiful and tempting about that with baseball, where it's just so easy to fall into the orbit of the game. Yeah. And talk about that poll, because, again, we've got kids who are at the high school prom two weeks ago who are showing up at the New York Penn League. You've got the Allen Mills of the world who are major league players who do not want to be in Aberdeen. Uh, you know, coaching high school kids. It's just not what they want to be doing. But for some reason, the lure of the game keeps them there. They don't go home and work for their brother's roofing company, and they don't, you know, and the high school guys get pulled out of their, their home in Nebraska, and they come to play baseball, and then it, not so much in the New York Penn League, but you got guys who hang on in the minors for years while they're into their family making next to no money, but the, game, the lure of the game is too strong. Yeah, it is this odd dynamic. Look, there's a part of it where those guys that's their dream and of course i don't knock anybody for shooting for their dream but there's this other aspect there are some guys who hang on for years at a time uh because they don't have any other job experience that's what they did their entire time in high school that's what they did their entire time in college and i feel like my experience was somewhat analogous where if you got cut from the baseball team you think okay now what and for me i just so happened to get a bug under my butt and I started writing a book about it. And then all of a sudden I'm a writer for a lot of guys. They go into insurance and a lot of guys go into the police force. They, a lot of guys try to find that fraternity that they had in baseball in other fraternities in adult life. And I find a lot of them do that in firefighting and police work. Interesting uh, way you put that, uh, you know, Greg, I can't, uh, I, I realize um, I didn't hear everything in the beginning, but when you were growing up, did you want to be a ball player? 
Oh yeah, I had dreams of being like a scrappy second baseman who couldn't hit worth as that couldn't hit worth a damn, but was really good at defense, and uh, that was my dream. Yeah, so you know, similar to your dream, I had I had a similar dream. Uh, I thought I'd hit with a little bit more power. You know, I might be a little bit bigger than you, but I thought I could play the uh-huh. field. But nonetheless, uh, it sounds like for either one of us, you know, we didn't necessarily take that path, but still very much involved. You know, maybe you more directly with the game, but. Um, I, I thought it was something interesting that you just said how um, maybe a lot of folks who played, whether it be it's high school ball or they go on to play college ball or, or it's somewhere in between, they fall off, right? You know, you realize when you're a junior or senior in high school, you're like, hey, I am pretty good, but I'm going to be going to debt and go to college, and so what am I going to be doing? Um, or you get to college, you think you're going to play ball, you play the first year, your grades suffer, you're like, I'm not going to play pro ball, how am I going to earn a living? And so, um, yeah, it's interesting to hear you talk about how maybe former ball players, if they don't go, you know, into that, they look for a fraternity of, of sorts in the way that you're talking about with insurance or a police force or, or a firefighter. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of interesting for me personally. Um, you know, I more just looked at it as because uh, I, I wanted to play pro ball like yourself. This wasn't good enough. Um, and... Uh, you know, I think two things for me. One, seeing as how my son Crosby's only six now, whether it be he decides to, and I hope, man, I hope, he, he's only six, but he looks like a southpaw. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, he's already got like a big leg up on everyone else if he's going to be a lefty. Um, but, you know, all kidding aside, I think that, you know, those types of jobs, like although they may seem great, if you're within a fraternity of folks and you have that camaraderie, I would mm-hmm. I would encourage, you know, and this is kind of, I got lucky, right? 20 years ago, baseball cards were thought of as like, you're an idiot. You know, you're really going to use your college education to do that. Um, but I just, I just think that so much has changed that maybe today, if you have like those aspirations, like for my son who's six, you, you 12, you're 15, you love baseball, that because the internet has made the playing field, you know, pun intended, right, more level, that you're going to mm-hmm. be able to pursue writing a book like you did, right? And then maybe now that you wrote one, you're like, you know, I didn't make as much money I wanted, but I really love it. And then you go on to write another one, or you talk to people about how to write a book, and you find something within that space that you just truly love. And, I mean, I don't know what it is exactly about ball cards for me. You know, was it the commerce? Was it... The history was it a little bit of um, you know the freedom of being away from my parents at 11 years old and spending my own quote unquote money you know I don't really know um, but I'm curious you know for yourself like where do you see the road going from here do you want to stay really close to baseball uh, you know have you dabbled in cards at all do you think you're going to do another book do you want to teach people um, you know about how to write a book because I have some friends mm-hmm. that kind of have a different profession, but they wrote a book about a journey and, and they, similar to what you just said, they enjoyed the process of it. Right. I mean, it's an interesting thing, right? Like baseball, this story with the Ironbirds is just the story that happened to find me at the time. I didn't go into that clubhouse setting out to write a book, but I just realized, wow, there's a lot of interesting dynamics here. Let me just take a bunch of notes. I had 285 single space pages of notes at the end of those two seasons. And I thought, okay, I'm going to turn this into a book. And um, I never set out to do that specifically. And oddly enough, as far as, you know, you mentioned coaching other people to write books, helping other people write books. I used to be a ghostwriter um, up until October of this last year, actually. So I, I'll ghostwrite books for CEOs, business leaders, lots of marketing type books, any, any niche business subject. I've probably either ghostwritten or edited a book about it. So I've definitely gone full on into the writing world. I don't consider myself a sports writer or a baseball writer. I just, this happens to be the story that found me. I lo- I used to love going to the Twins games all the time. Uh, I grew up going to the Metrodome, which was just <laughs> a very sad place to watch a baseball game. But when you're a kid, you don't know any different. Um, and odd- oddly enough, the only piece of memorabilia I have left from those two seasons is an Alex Schmar- Alex Schmarzo. I mean, I'm looking at this as 2011 stats, 0-1, 4.91 ERA, 3.2 innings pitched. I mean, Alex, I don't care about Alex as a player, but Alex is my best friend on the 2012 Ironbirds, and he signed this card for me before he got moved up. And to me, 
he's not playing in the game anymore. But to me, this is the most valuable piece of baseball memorabilia I may ever have. And that that's my connection to the game is the people behind all of the memorabilia, the people behind the numbers. That That's why I wrote this book, because those guys are such fascinating characters. And I just love learning about them. When I was working at Game Ops for LOL, uh, we were trying to get walk up music for Ryan Kalish, who was with the Spinners at the time. And we were basically yelling out of the press box to the field during batting practice, trying to figure out what he wanted for walk-up music. And he wrote this song from the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band on a baseball and threw it up to the press box. I've still got that baseball. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a, that story is never going to leave you. So it's like, that, I love those moments, those anecdotes. All right. Are you still in Austin? Yes, sir. Still in Austin. All right. So I've got some ties with the Round Rock Express if you want to go back to washing jock straps for a while. I think I, 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 that's the that's the easiest no I've ever had in my life. Yeah, I think it is much, but I uh, put in a good word for you. You're doing stand up down there, right? Are you still doing the stand up thing? I'm doing. I was doing stand up until about a month ago when I started focusing hard on the uh, book promotions. But uh, you know, I'd get out there and I'd sling a few jokes in front of a drunk crowd on a Tuesday night, like anyone else like anyone else no that is the toughest thing in show business i love stand-up and i just love watching you guys you're just up there with people and a mic and what is it 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 maybe a half an hour to fill that's that's a manly profession right there although i know women do it great yeah it's terrifying i you know some of the shows that i was doing you get three minutes sometimes you get 15 minutes and there is nothing more terrifying than having maybe 10 minutes of material and you got to fill up 15 minutes of stage time. That's frightening. And there's no, con you know, I might never see any of these people in the crowd again, but I'm thinking to myself up there, like, if I don't do this right, I I'm screwed. Like my life is over. You just can't get past that thought process. It's a tight rope walk. I love it. Man, I'll, I'll tell you, I was feeling good about breaking and being live, like on YouTube and stuff. You know, I have no experience prior to vintage breaks. I got to tell you, man, you may have just put me back into a slump. Like, no. you know, I'm all of a sudden now nervous. Like, I'm like, wait a minute. What am I going to talk about? There's, I don't know, 11 minutes left. They got three minutes of material. It's going to be a big freaking problem. I was just going to tell them, stay out of radio then, because that's a day-to-day -day occurrence. It's like, I got a three-hour show every day. I don't know what the hell I'm going to talk about for three hours. Well, you guys can't do crowd work either. I can lean on the that's fact, like, hey, where are you from? And that would kill a couple of minutes. Well, it's talk radio. We do a little crowd work. That works out. True. All right, so tell everybody where they can get the book. Get the book. It's Clubby, a minor league baseball memoir. I have a bunch of extra content. Pre-order the book. It comes out April 1st. Go to clubbybook.com. That's C-L-U-B-B-I-E book.com. And we have all kinds of fun content, interviews with, with players. I have a bunch of written content. It's a good time on that website. Did you ever meet uh, Cal while you were there? Cal Ripken Jr. was my boss for two years. I saw he was like Bigfoot. Uh, I saw the dude twice, never introduced himself. I will give him the benefit of the doubt. His mom got kidnapped in the middle of the 2012 season, my first season there. So I, I think he had a few other things on his mind at that point. I don't yeah, that know. That could be a whole story. episode in, of in into itself there. That's crazy. Now, take a minute and expand on that story. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand. You drop that in there. You don't expand. Yeah. <laughs> his mom got kidnapped. The most, the messed up part about it. Cal Ripken Jr., um, his mom was kidnapped from their home. They never found out who did it. He just tied her up, drove her around the Aberdeen area for a few hours, and then dropped her off back at the home. Cal put out a $100,000 reward. The FBI was in on it. They have since never found any details. Val, his mom, actually passed away a couple of months ago. And so that whoever did that, they don't know if it was a ransom. They expect that it was someone who just didn't know who they were kidnapping. Uh, but that was a messed up summer, man, because there was a lot of Ripken family in the in the Ironbirds front office, so their minds were elsewhere that whole summer. Well, we wish you luck with the book, and we appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you, guys. It was fun. Absolutely. Right. Greg, please do me a favor. Drop me an email with your link where they can order your book direct, because I love that it's not on Amazon. And you don't know not to Amazon, but they got enough business of their own. So... Um, what I'd like to do is an email later this week that we send out for our company, Vintage Breaks, on a daily basis. I'd like to plug your book in one of our emails and give them the direct link to where they can order the book on uh, the pre-order and, you know, see all that great content that you had mentioned. And I'll put up awesome. the link right here for everybody who's watching so they can go directly and order the book. Um, awesome. We'll do. I appreciate you doing that, Lou. And before you leave, Greg, I wanted to show you my own piece of priceless memorabilia. Uh, Please. This is my seat. I don't know how well you can see it. 
this is the seat that um, I was sitting on from the 1996 Yankee World Series Game 6 in the bleachers. <laughs> um, and, you know, that could be a whole episode by itself also. Uh, but at the end of the day, I was in college at Rutgers uh, College, and, you know, it was a lot harder to buy tickets for sold-out sporting events back then. Right. You know, there were no apps, so, you know, I had written on several dorm rooms, uh, you know, like those whiteboard, uh, those white erase boards. And uh, basically, I remember I was, spending, I was paying $200 for a ticket. I didn't care where I sat. And shout out to my friend Nicole. She got me into the stadium. And uh, certainly the rest is history. But, um, you know, the Yankees, uh, they didn't care so much about them. I mean, they didn't care about the memorabilia in the 70s, right, the 80s. But, you know, the 90s, maybe a little bit more. But still, there was such pandemonium because the Yankees hadn't won it in such a long time. And I had right. a big winter coat on, specifically a triple fat goose Jets coat. Um, put it under my coat, man, got in the streets, there was mayhem, it didn't matter. I could have had a bazooka, frankly, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> so um, you, did you bring a wrench set and everything with you into the stadium? No, no, this is what's wild. So so to be fair, right, you know, I'm not, I, I, my birthday's in November, and I definitely wasn't 21, but somehow I'm drinking beers at the stadium, and it's like the fifth inning, and something magical happened, Greg. I'm sitting on the state, you know, I'm, I'm like sitting down on it, it's a little loose, and at some point, right, people are getting up and you're stomping. I know you can't see my feet. You're stomping. And it's almost like in the movie Shawshank Redemption when he's going into the wall and he's like using oh, yeah. his little thing and he sees that little crack. I'm like, wait a minute. The seat just moved. <laughs> so it's the sixth inning and I got another beer, a few more peanuts. And I'm like, huh, this thing's really moving. I wonder. And of course, by the eighth or ninth, you realize the Yankees might do this. I'm like, Jesus, criminy, man. I got to go home with this seat. It's meant to be. So at that point, I mean, I wish there was video. Literally, I'm like a complete savage. You know, they talk about savage in the box. I have no tools. I have my hands that are definitely cold because of the winter. And to be fair, like, maybe I asked, you know, my friends, like, hey, could you do me a favor and take over for a minute and just keep smashing your foot? Um, and, you know, I mean, listen, I have no idea what it's worth, but I know that um, Crosby sees me talking about it. Uh, at home, thinks it's hysterical. My wife thinks it's a piece of junk. Um, <laughs> right. And to me, it's priceless. And to be honest, that's what makes baseball and the whole, whether it be you're on the collecting side, you're on the love of the game side, you just play, or really you're intertwined for both, uh, like some of us here all chatting today. Um, those are the kinds of mementos that really are priceless. Did you pull any piece of memorabilia out of there, Greg? In particular, if I've got my timeline right, you probably saw Trey Mancini down there and uh, probably a couple other players. Any anything that you've you've kept? <laughs> I got I, I, the only thing I really kept is this Alex Schmarzo card. But I got to tell you guys this really quickly. In 2013, we had Mikey Stremski and Trey Mancini on oh, that team. Oh, yeah. And what I would do is, players in order to get new bats, they would trade me a, their old broken bat. And in order to get a new one, it was an honor system kind of thing, they thought. But what I was doing is I was selling them up in the um, up in the gift shop. Yep. They would sell them for 20 bucks, and I'd get a $7.50 cut. And what I realized is that I would just write the name of the player on the bottom on the athletic tape. And it, everyone just assumed that the clubby was going to be an honorable guy and wouldn't lie about whose bat it was. But what I realized is that <laughs> Manny Hernandez, Sam Kimmel bats, they didn't sell. But if I wrote... Yaz number 28 on it or God. Mancini number 51 on it they would sell like crazy so there's just a swath of people up there who think they have Trey Mancini and Mikey Stremski bats and I just completely lied about it and I'm sorry I know that's like super that's not kosher but I needed that seven dollars and fifty cents baby well listen clubby probably wouldn't have happened without it and I mean listen, at the end of the day right I just announced I, I don't know can the cops come after me? Grand larceny? What's his worth? Thousands? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, so at the end of the day, we live and learn and hopefully, you know, become slightly smarter. I appreciate that. Greg, thanks for the time. We appreciate it so much. Thanks Good for luck. Joining with us, Greg. Thanks, fellas. All right. That was fun. Lou, that was great. I'm glad that I was able to catch uh, most of that. Um, so I have to say uh, two things. Um, well, three things. First, please order Greg's book. Uh, check out the link. Lou, if you could drop it in there. Uh, second of all, it's it's definitely a problem. J5 now has control of my Google Calendar. Oh, no. I simply offered it the other day as a suggestion. You guys might say, like, wow, Leighton, you're, like, not even close today to on time. I'm just going to – I don't want to, like, expand on it. We only have a few minutes here. I'll just say – I go to Sam earlier. I go, did you know that J5 now makes appointments for me? I don't even get told. I simply just look. I'm like, oh, I guess I have to be somewhere at a certain time. 
I'm like, oh, I wish I was told that. Well, that worked both ways because when we were setting up the show before the show, J5 says, I don't know if we have a guest or anything. Yes, we have a guest. <laughs> and I said, it wasn't my guest, too. It was Layton's guest. <laughs> well, believe me, I can tell you now, not only he'll... He'll, uh, I'm sure, put it on uh, Google. He'll be sending me uh, a variety of messages. And then we're talking very briefly. And, of course, I didn't understand the extent of exactly what he was saying to me on the phone, J5. But, of course, we're super excited about this collection of play balls that we just bought oh, yesterday. Yeah. Was uh, J5 going over that with you? Yeah. And I he actually need you to answer because I know he was going over it with you. Yeah, it's because beautiful. this lovely book's right in front of me. Yep. So the big mystery is the big mystery is which uh, Hall of Fame you're giving away. That's all. You know, all... we're gonna uh, we're gonna continue to go through it right now. But really, I, I tried really hard to pry out of them. Like, hey, how did the dates happen? Why was it every card? And like, if it's not enough, and I think last night my wife was sleep deprived, so I'm telling her about the collection, and you know, she understands, uh, you know, cards, and she goes, oh, they're all stamped, and so I have her like just like, all right, yeah. so she's like in her own mind. Hey, Ted Williams, rookie, gray card, like stamped. All right. And I go, oh, wait, you thought that was all? And I go, if it wasn't enough, he wrote JR, like Junior, on the back of every card. She starts hysterically laughing. She, you know, she, she wasn't well. Um, Mike says you've got two wives now. <laughs> there's a crazy, speaking of multiple wives, there's a crazy special. I want to know if anyone in our audience has watched it. It's on Netflix or HBO Max, one of those about the Mormons and some killings going on in the community. I just want to know if anyone knows on the series. No, um, but, uh, well, the, the stamp thing was interesting to me because I asked J five if they were different stamps. Cause I could see a kid with one of those old rotating stamp things. When he got the card, he'd stamp the date on it when he got the card, but they all have the same date on it, which makes it interesting. I don't know what the significance of the date is. Well, to me, my first guess is, I mean, uh, it seems fairly obvious, right? He got him on May 9th, 1941. When I say he, I'm not convinced. Oh. Sorry. Oh, it's like a ghost. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't know he was right there. We were, you know, we were saying some things about you, just trying to share some stuff. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I saw I wasn't over there before. I didn't realize I was over there. I'll have to just be careful in the future. So Connor, uh, I'm thinking how much the stamp uh, diminishes the value. So maybe you can talk about that when you give me a theory. Absolutely. So first, my theory is that whoever got the cards, May 9th might have been their birthday, might have been the day they just got the cards. And they're like, wow, uh, I'm going to make sure that I stamp them all. And that's just what they did with whether it be, you know, someone gave them a stationary set, whether it be they got a train set. I just think that you know, people did weird things, right? Like I had a, this the, the ugliest cabinet, metal cabinet for my cards in my basement when I was a kid, and I can close my eyes and visualize it. Horrendous, but I put like stickers on it, you know, yep. what have you. Yeah, it looked great in my eyes. I mean, the thing was disgusting. It really looked yeah. like. And you're not thinking collectors' items. You're not thinking big money item in in what eighty years. You know, you're not thinking that way. No, no, not at all. Um, so I think that uh, it had to do with uh, birthday or when they received the cards. Um, in terms of what they're going to grade, this is my advice for anyone uh, who has a question about, let's say, like a card with a qualifier, is like just let you know, let's just take a random card here. If you think a common is going to grade X, meaning five, and it has writing on the back or a stamp on it, then they'll likely put an MK, right? So it'll be a five MK, and in terms of value, it affects it by about two grades. So depending on how valuable the card is. If it's a 5 MK and that's what it grades, then I would suggest that it's going to sell for about a PSA 3 price. But sometimes a qualifier affects a card by three grades because, for example, if the stamp's really obtrusive and it's in the middle of the guy's face, Lou, maybe that'll be worth a little bit less money. Hmm. I, I got to I gotta give Ernie some credit here. Ernie says, according to history, May 9, 1941 was the day British intelligence at the Bletchley Park breaks German spy codes. After capturing the Enigma machines aboard the weather ship Munchen. Yep, uh, I'm sure that was it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, yeah, every single one of them. I mean, he did not forget to put his initials. Um, I did think it was a fascinating collection. Now, we certainly don't want to jinx it, J5, but tomorrow, tomorrow we have something very, well, tomorrow we have a couple, but tomorrow is something very interesting. Yes. So we can't talk about it further oh. until, until we procure it. But, Lou, this is like just the tip of the iceberg as to what we have going on. Nice. 
So you're just going to tease us and just leave us hanging. That's correct. Well, Lou, good radio is, hey, tune on in at oh, this date tease. and right. time in the future if you want to know the full story. That's right. Stay tuned. And by the way, if you want to know the full story on this uh, you know, collection, you want to see more images and such, uh, all that info will be on our blog at justcollect.com slash blog. I'm just picking out right now one of the nineteen. Daniel says uh, the latest sale on a PSA three on Ted Williams thirty nine play ball rookie is twenty eight hundred dollars. Yeah, I have to check it out. I was looking at the. Uh, oh, here we go. There's a couple, a uh, couple good ones. So we're gonna choose a nineteen forty play ball Hall of Famer to give away right now from can this you, collection. Can you put the death shot up here? Oh yeah, absolutely. The little eyeball. Uh, after J five, you uh, help out with that. Let's see what we get another look at these cards. Yeah, no, these are great. All right, I think we're going to go with Chuck Klein. Who's PD, David? Chuck Klein. If David means program director, he must be a radio guy, too. There we go. So we're going to give that away for free, courtesy of Vintage Breaks and Just Collect. Oh, handsome, dude. Uh, so I know it's the end of the show today um, and uh, was a few minutes behind, but um, you know, I did want to just talk about um, uh, uh, how do I bring this back uh, to the main screen here, J5? Click the little eyeball. Oh, David's a radio guy. He did bring up the program director. I'm not sure how to do it. Oh, no. uh, he does it. Uh, Lou does the rest. Oh, uh, okay. Does all that crazy, that crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully whoever wins that Chuck Klein is going to enjoy that. Um, you know, we're going to uh, probably give out a few more of these cards, maybe another one or two today during our broadcast. The new 1965, <coughs> excuse me, a new 1965 yeah. Topps baseball set break. Which uh, the gang's going to show off some of the highlights in just a few minutes. Um, I did want to give a shout out to my son Crosby, uh, and really, you know, all the other kids. Uh, try not to become too mushy. Uh, I'm good at that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was down at uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia earlier this week uh, with him for an appointment. And when I say an appointment, he had appointments all day. Um, yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's a brave little boy, along with a lot of the other uh, boys and girls that are in there. And so, you know, I realize that it's March. A lot of people start thinking about, you know, making donations to a particular charity in November or December, you know, around Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever holiday in particular you celebrate. But, you know, I would tell you that, you know, when you're when you're going to, uh, you know, Children's Hospital and, um, you know, you're going there uh, even just to visit, let's say, someone else. So if it's a friend of the family and they have a son or daughter there. Or if it's a cousin and they have, you know, a son or daughter in there. Um, it's not any different, candidly, than my, me going in there with Crosby. And what I mean is, is that when I'm in there, you know, uh, Greg had been talking, for example, like about a fraternity today. Yeah. I really do believe this. And I'm trying very, very hard to stay, you know, unemotional about it. But, you know, like in a minute, I could probably be a good actor because I could turn it on in a second if I had to. Um, but the reality of it is... Uh, you know, my heart goes out to each and every one of the, the, the people that are there because they all have a story. Yeah. Um, and so just keep that in mind. Like when you're, you know, doing your, your, your day job or, uh, you know, like I had tennis this morning, for example. And, you know, I'll tell you like, you know, hey, uh, maybe I would have hit that shot better. I wish it was in better shape. And listen, a lot of these things are in our control, uh, you know, whether it be it's work or personal for fitness or eating or what have you. And. This is not a motivational speech, although it may sound like it. There's a lot of kids out there, just like a CHOP, for example, but I'm sure children's hospitals all across not just our country, but across the world, that would literally kill just for that opportunity. So just keep that in mind tonight when you're sitting down for dinner, um, you know, or, or relaxing or whatever, whatever the case may be. And, you know. Yeah. And the stakes are never higher with a child, and this is God's work. And, and these people you know, take it, do it so well and just help out families that have unbelievable burdens yep so uh anyway just wanted to uh special shout out to chop and crosby lost his tooth uh oh. last or i'm sorry was it 
two days ago, and I want to make sure the two fairy visited yesterday. Kazi was very pleased with the deal that was made. Uh, you know. Was he? Yes, he was. The deposit's been made in the piggy bank. Um, and it's funny because he was trying to do the math, and he was, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to spoil anything in case he happens to be watching. So uh, yep. I doubt he is, but um, let's just say he was very, very happy. And, uh, you know, um, enjoy the rest of your day today. Stay tuned for Vintage Breaks North. We'll be coming on right now till 9.30 Eastern time with Sam, J5, Dougie, Emily, and the rest of the gang here, including yours truly. And then um, tonight is 9.30, so... Vintage Breaks West will take over. Forgot today was Wednesday. Uh, and tomorrow, Vintage Breaks South will start broadcasting at about 1 o'clock Eastern time. So we have a lot of great content coming up over the next day or so. And hopefully soon be revealing our next athlete break experience brought Ooh. to you by Vintage Breaks. Very nice. Thanks, for everybody, for showing up today. Uh, just share it with your friends. And we'll see you next week. Take it easy, y'all. There's Chuck. You want to give away? What up guys give me a second i have to set some stuff up Did you figure it out? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. It's all good. Not bad. Don't listen to Emily. She's a bad influencer. <laughs> okay. These are the highlights of everybody is waiting for. Cool. The 65 separate. Cool. Right, guys these are our 65 highlights that's a Joe Morgan Bill what's up buddy how are you my Brandon Clark moment just sold on top shots Steve Carlton Richard. very cool will awesome brother there's a big hit look at that man Ooh. Roberto Clemente that not ten. We got Roger Maris. Nice. We got... Tony Perez rookie. We got Willie Mays. Guys, you want a set break? There you go. It's not live on the website. Dougie, I have an idea. I'm going to take a picture of this mantle and this Clemente. Mm -hmm. And in the Instagram post, tag... Um, use the... I will link the listing. On Vintage Breaks, okay? Vintage Breaks. You want me to... I wish I could do that. I miss my hair. Yeah, well then why'd you get the haircut? Because it was just uneven. Uh huh. People 
Yes, you do. It's okay. We love you anyway. Here you go, Dougie. Alright. I want to find out who gets that Chuck Klein 1940 Playboy Hall of Fame. I don't know why, but I'm so proud of this collection. Yeah? Yeah. What's it? Was? Here, Dougie, you put that in the cabinet. Yeah. It wasn't all easy peasy. Like, hey, hey, here, show me. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I don't know, it sounded pretty easy. Well, I didn't do most of the talking. But I had to do most of the talking for her to get here. Mm -hmm. For the couple to get here. Mm -hmm. That was the hard part. You say I'm letting you do the hard part. That's I'm what he said. <laughs> Alright, so what? An iPod? No, no, it's okay. The top seven. Uh, you have a list. Of email, Doug emoji. You gotta do lots of lots Top of lots. seven get this card? They Before share it? First person gets that. They Second share Second place gets a 65. And third to seven get a at the party spot. Okay. Good luck, everybody. 1940 Playboy Chuck Klein. And four. Top seven. Bob Leto, Lee Chow, Brian, Andy, Lisa, David, Orlando. Copy and paste with bad boys. All right, Doug. Ready? No, he's not ready. All right. Well, uh, Lee Chow gets a 65 tops set spot. Lee Chow? Yep. Okay. And uh, look on the screen. Third through seventh get a after party spot. Who got first place? Uh, Bob, Bob Leto. Leto. Uh, Taking home that Chuck Klein. That's for you, Bob Letta. All right. Uh, Lisa. Lisa. Sean Dooley, what's going on, man? Uh, did any of the promos close by four? The, the 1500 didn't fill up. It didn't? No. How many were we short? Uh, eight. Okay. No problem. All right. Guys, now live on vintagebreaks.com. We have not only our 20 to 1,000 briefcases, but we have our Vintage Breaks Wheel of Breakage, guys. We have both of these bad boys live right now. They started at 530. Uh, so, Dougie, we're going to start off with an offline promo. Uh, this is going to be a 10 out of 100, Dougie. 10 out of 100. First come, first serve. So... That's starting at 5.30, Dougie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refresh real quick. All right, you're good, brother. So starting, yep, 5. Uh, has to close by... No. No, it's 5.45, 6.15. Yeah, 6.15. Has to close by 6.15. Um, guys, we have our 67 Tops Baseball Starter Set. We have a Platinum Ticket, 7.50 Beret Credit. We have a 1979 Tops Baseball Rack Pack. Uh, 2019 Optic Basketball Blaster Box. Uh, we have we have gaggles. We have gaggles with those exclusive briefcase wheel spins. So guys, that exclusive briefcase wheel is going down five o'clock. J5 is going to be spinning that wheel live with you guys uh, on Friday. On Friday, J5 is going to be spinning this wheel. So so far we have three spins. There were three people who won these spins last night in the $1,000 briefcase. So, guys, we're going to be compiling the list all week, okay? 
So if anyone snags a wheel spin tonight, uh, then they will go on the list. Right now we have three people on that list. All other prizes from this gaggle were already issued, but those wheel spins are being uh, put on a list that will be done Friday. What's up, baby? You like looking at it? I do. Uh, you, you, dude, you already know this. Sure. I, we were talking about this yesterday. You change your hair. Why did you change your hair? Change my hair? What are you talking about? It looks like this before I emo. Uh-huh. Preppy. Okay. Look at your mind. I have many... It has many do's, Ed Boy. Mm -hmm. You can do what I want with my hair. Mm -hmm. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man. Like grown man decisions. Who's like Bubba Bird? Bubba Bird. Bubba Bird. Bubba Bird. I like bumblebee. Alright, let's break something. But I don't have a bumblebee. Or a biotope. Dougie, keep us updated on that offline. I don't want it to, uh, you know. I, it looks like we have some movement on it, Dougie. <clears throat> First 40 wheel spins bonus. I don't think I announced one. Uh... Sure. Why not, <clears throat> Douglas? I'm gonna. Why do you? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm waiting for. Did I piss you off? No, I'm waiting for instructions. Are you upset? No, I'm just trying to get stuff prepped for you and keep track of the bonus. That's so nothing new. Nothing new. Okay, all right, good. You gave me a look. I didn't like it. Anyway, first 40 wheel spins, Douglas, starting at 530. So anyone who bought at 530 is included in this, okay? First 40 wheel spins has to close by, let's say, 630, okay? That way everyone has, like, you know, 40 minutes instead of 30. First 40 wheel spins. Uh, first place will get five. How you doing? Okay. Bonus wheel spins. Those them free wheel spins, Dougie. That's what we like. Those are going to get added to the wheel spins for M80 tomorrow morning. Um, that's right. Um, second place. Second place. Uh, let's see. Sean, you sent us another page? Sean, you know how to make my day, man. I can't wait. Uh, hold on, stay on task, Dougie. Um, second place is gonna get a wheel spin and a 500 high roller. Third place will get a 250 bonus spot and a wheel spin. All right, make sure it's in the chat and uh, you know do all those things you do well, Dougie. I'm gonna go look at that new page. <laughs> um, I hope there's no drama today. Dude, this is insane. There's the We got the next page. This is page eight. Oh my god, that's so good. I'm gonna forward it to. Yes, me and more. Take it. I already gave it to Doug to put in the cabinet. Oh, okay, good. That's what I want to make sure. Yep. Phoebe shipping. Johnny. John, 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 John. No. 
Oh, man. All right, where did... Yeah. Okay. He gets a pass. Uh, let's break this. Let's see. 2017. Panini Prism. What's going on, guys? 2017 Panini Prism Basketball Box 43. Good luck to everyone in this break. Uh, that's a 7. We are looking for a Tatum rookie. We want that Tatum rookie card. Hey, Dougie. Yeah. Um, Daniel Lynch wants you to know that I said five wheel spins for first place. Okay. Math is hard. Well, I majored in journalism. What you cool for? Nothing. Uh oh. Are you pulling? I hope so. I will be pulling nice tandem. Pack one for Scott. Alrighty then. Six stops to go in the 10 to 100 for a briefcase. We got Courtney Lee. Oh, we got a BAM out of Bio Rookie. We'll take a BAM. We will take a BAM. Nice. I like that. Nice rookie Bam out of bio, Scott. We have a silver Scott Brooks and a Reggie Jackson. <laughs> Did you see the page? No, I I I I'll have to just look at it later. Kemba Walker. Kyle Lowry Fundamentals. Uh, we have two offlines right now, brother. We got an Ivan Rab rookie card, Green Prism. John Wall. Um, we have a 40 at 50, and we have a 10 at 100. Larry Nance Jr. We have Gary Harris Patch for the Denver Nuggets.
Harrison Barnes, Fundamentals, and we have Sterling Brown, Rookie Card. Dougie, question for you in the chat. Pack four for Guy Corbin. Denzel Valentine. Ben Simmons. Joel Embiid. Maurice Harkless. Pack four. I have a wig. I should try to get this wig. And that's my hair. That'd be fun. Do you see? I don't. I don't see anything from Matthew Thompson. Neither do I. Matthew, I don't see a purchase, man. Yeah, so. Let me see Townsend. Townsend. Can you give me a timestamp, Matthew? 538. I see it, Doug. Okay. If you uh, search him. Just one, one, one spot? No, it was at type in go to the search bar type in Townsend. You'll see it. It's for uh, today, five thirty eight PM. We have Mark Gessel, Tyler Ulis. We have Josh Jackson and Mike Muscala. Oh, that's it. You see it? Yeah, so he's got two injuries. Yep. Yeah, we got you, Matt. It's pack six. He probably it's probably a loaded up cart from the other he day. His car and didn't check out. Yeah, that's probably why I did that. Yeah. Needs to see if they can uh, do something about that. Oh. Enos Cantor, Vince Carter, Iman Schumpert, Silver. What kind of a name? Iman Schumpert. Yeah, what kind of a name is that? Huh? Islamic, I think. Okay. All right, ten and a hundred's closed. Pack six. There's some spillage if you want to. Go for it, Dougie. All right. Just remember, thirty minutes from whenever you start it. Yeah, Matt, you're you're good. You're in the first one. Mark F asked a question there. Uh, Mark, you're going to be in the second one here that we're running. Dr. Strange, we made an uh, announcement um, at 2 o'clock and then again at the beginning of this show. Um, the wheel, the exclusive wheel spins are going to happen on Friday. Uh, we are going to give uh, a week to compile a list. So uh, more people are going to have an opportunity before we spin it and unveil it. 
Um, Johnny is gonna do the wheel spins Friday live while uh, you know we're you know while we're live uh, breaking with you guys. Uh, when Johnny and I switch, probably a little after that, he's gonna do the wheel with you guys on Friday. Got me a new hood ornament, <laughs> Monty. Yup. <laughs> yes, sir. spots left in our second briefcase. No problem, brother. <laughs> we want to we want to build up the list a little more. We thought, you know, only 3 spins. That's not very fun. We wanted to get a few more spins for it. All right, guys, this is for the first briefcase. Good luck. Uh, that's a seven. Tom O'Connor. Tom O'Connor. You get to select the first briefcase. Tom O'Connor. Congrats, buddy. Tom, let me know in the chat, brother. Let me know what briefcase you want. You get the first briefcase of the evening. All numbers are available. Alright guys, this is our 2020 Donruss Optic Baseball Box 5. Good luck. We got a 10 the hard way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Alright, that's the order of the break. Good luck. Tom, you want nine? You got it, buddy. Number nine for Tom. Tom O'Connor. All right. Good luck, guys. Uh, Green Thunder asked a question. Yeah, Justin, you're in the second one. Sean, yes, sir. Sean. Sean, right now I can tell you your reader your readers are myself, Dougie, J5, M80, Charles, and Monty. You have six readers right now, Sean, in the VB workforce. It's gotta start somewhere, but uh, And uh you know Ben views the pages when he's here. We have Jonathan Hernandez, rookie. Thank you. Can I have a card sticker once, please? Yes. Well, I have some right now, but I'm going to need some. Yeah, my sheet's empty.
What's up, EJ? You got Jack Laferty. Javier Baez Silver. And we have a stained glass Trey Mancini. Nice. Sean, it's amazing, brother. We really appreciate all you do. Let's pack one. Pack two, Curtis. Steven Clark, what's up, man? Aaron Judge, Diamond Kings. Aaron Nola. Ozzy Albi. We got Mythical Aristes Acuna. Joseph Bukovic, you're up. Glad you just got off, brother. Christian Yelich, all-star. Elvis Andreas. Oh, oh, snap. Joseph Bukovic. How about a rated prospect silver of Wander Franco? <laughs> Joseph. Prospect in all baseball. Beautiful, Joseph. Look at that bad boy. Nice. That's a nice hit, Joseph. A little Cal Ripken action. Oh, uh, you know, Stephen Clark, we got to, I think actually our offlines might be closed. Dougie hasn't checked in a minute. But uh, I think they might be closed. Or close to it. Ten to hundred for briefcase number two has seven spots left. Okay. And we still need nine more wheel spins for first forty. All right, you heard him, guys. We have fifty-four of seventy-five. Orange rated prospect auto of Victor Mesa Jr. Yellow box. Oh, I threw it to you. Four, Stephen G. Number four. And we have a base Nick Madril rated prospect. Number five. Sheldon Neuse, rookie card. We have George Springer. Oh. Gabriel, nice hit, brother. We have a silver Bo Bichette rookie card. Beautiful, Gabriel. That's what I'm talking about, brother. Look at that, Dougie. Silver Bo Bichette. Good players that I don't want in the division. Come on. 
Everyone loves Bo Bichette, man. Beautiful card, Gabriel. Love it. That's a nice one, brother. We got AJ Puck. Look at the fire. Love Boba Shep, man. Yes, sir. Me too, EJ. I'm hoping they come back from PSA before, uh, before opening day. I'm hoping to get my PSA sub back before opening day. We got Justin Verlander. Javier Baez. Oh, we got a 5 of 50 teal Cody Bellinger. Yeah, this is a solid box so far. We are on pack 6 for Guy Corbin. We got Mythical Vladdy Guerrero Jr. Pack seven. Pack seven for Steven G. Nine more. We got Jake Fraley rookie. Max Scherzer. All right, Stephen G. We got a silver. Fernando Tatis Jr. Diamond Kings. Nine more what? Wheel spins for the first thirty. Gotcha. What? Uh, didn't. What time did it have to close? Six thirty. Okay. And we have Illusions, Whit Merrifield. Pack 7. Dude, we're hitting nice silvers. We're hitting real nice silvers. We have Anthony K rookie, nice pitcher. We got Tim Anderson, Mike Soraka, and Kirby Puckett. Bro, I had my cart filled with subs. Went to charge of the dorm first place. Doubled the charge. Oh man, that was so easy. Yeah, um, EJ, I hear SGC has really good, um, really good turnaround times. You want to check out SGC. We got Vladdy. Diamond Kings. Grow. Junior. We got... Fernando Tatis Jr. We have a silver Kirby Puckett. Pack nine for Brian Thomas. We have a Wander Franco rated prospect base. Nice. That you have you looking on a 10 and 100? Brizdar Gratterall rookie. Five spots left. 
What time does it have to close by? Six. Freddie Freeman. Shane Bieber. Don Mattingly. 6.30. 6.30? All right, so just put a status update for both of those promos, please. Pack 11, Yonk. Tyler, I have been restraining myself all week. It's hard. There's a lot of, like, slabs I want to buy right now. But I'm trying to, like... I'm trying to, uh... What's... I'm trying to save my money because I want to buy, specific, like, really good slabs in a couple weeks. So I'm just trying to, you know, restrain myself. He looked up our storefront. Yeah. It's yep. It's on Google. I'm not meant to break. Just collect. Yeah, just collect has it. It's not a secret. We're both. No, it's just funny. Yeah. It's <laughs> Jalen Davis rookie. No, I know it's not hard to find our, our location, but it's just funny that some people... Brian Anderson. Yeah. We have a silver stained glass Trey Mancini. Have you checked it out, John? Oh, yeah. Eyes and Diaz. Guys, these promos have to close by 5 30. What's uh what's Andrew talking about? Oh, bonus is mine. Uh, so did not sell out? Neither of them ran. Neither of them filled up, Andrew. Huh? Oh, uh, the marble race can be run. Yes. Yeah, but always. but the offline and the mystery briefcase did not fill up, so they didn't close. Got it. Uh, Andrew, the marble race I can run, buddy. But the other, the mystery briefcase and the fifteen hundred did not close. They were not filled. Johnny Cuto. Keston Huda. Jake Frele rookie card. I can run the Marble Race though. This is a red, white, and blue. 31 of 150. Jake Frele rookie. Pack 12 for Guy Corbin. Dude, they load these boxes up. Is this the box you pulled the one of one Gavin Lux? Small one. Uh, no, no choice. choice? Okay, okay. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. Uh, Shane Bieber. Eloy Jimenez. We have a silver Travis Demright rookie. Dougie, do you agree that the Grizzlies are going to walk all over the Wizards tonight? Uh, I mean, they're in, at home and the Wizards are terrible, so I would think that they would win tonight. Now, what happens if Wizards win tonight? Then we're wrong. Then we're wrong. That's kind of a... What else? Um, it would be a big upset. You think the Wizards – actually, what what record, like minimum record do you need to qualify for um, playoffs? It doesn't matter. Like the Records don't matter. It's just the first eight seeds. Right. But you, you could be a below 500 team and still make the playoffs. I know. Well, the East, the east is more of the – the East is more susceptible to that than the West. The West is way too deep. I know. We have Joe Palumbo, rookie. We have Albert Pujols, Matt Chapman. We have Royce Lewis, rated prospects. All right, first 40 wheel spins are done. Pack 15, Matt Yonk. Not a Dominguez in sight. I mean, we, to be fair, we hit two Wander Francos. 
So I'm not complaining. And we hit a nice Boba shot. Nick Salak, rookie. But I mean, I wouldn't mind one Dominguez. Corey Kluber. We have a silver. Aristides Acuna Mythical. And we have a Jordan Alvarez. Isn't this a rookie? Isn't Jordan Alvarez's rookie year the same as Boba Shop? This box, this box is fire. Calhoun, Joey Votto. Oh, look at that. 36 of 60, Dougie. Red rated rookie, Aristides Acuna. Dude, a, a nice red prism. He plays for the Cincinnati Reds. It's perfect. Perfect. Love it. Love this Aristides. Pack 16, EJ Bognier. EJ, I love this Aristes, man. I, You know I love it when the parallels match their team colors. It looks so beautiful, man. And we have Trevor Story Illusions. Pack 17. We got Justin Dunn, rookie. Brandon Lowe. We have a silver Don Mattingly. And we have an Evan White stained glass. Doug, can you check your email? Pack 18, Guy Corbin. Matt Olson. Sandy Alcantara. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. We got Kyle Lewis, Rookie of the Year, Auto, Spot 18 for Guy Corbin. Look at this Kyle Lewis Auto. Beautiful Guy Corbin. Love it, brother. Gary Carter. That's that pack. Congrats, uh, Guy Corbin. Got bridesmaided, Stephen G. Yeah, sorry, Stephen. Pack 19, Curtis Boytnot. We have Alex Bregman. Eugene Suarez. We have a silver... Justin Verlander. And we have a rated prospect, Jared Klenick. Jared Klenick. It's a shame the Mets don't have Mike playing. Green, what's up, buddy? 
Brides, <laughs> Mike Green heard bridesmaid and he came ra- running. He's like, what? what, what He's what, like, I, I'm on duty. <laughs> I'm your bridesmaid. What's up? Patrick Sandoval, rookie. My ears were burning. <laughs> We got Walker Bueller. 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 We got Keetle Mart. Oh, and we have a mythical Wander Franco. That's our third Wander Franco of the box. Even though, you know, it's an insert, but still. We hit a silver Wander, a base Wander, and an insert Wander. Wonder what you're going to next. All right, guys, that was our 2020 Donruss Optic Baseball Box 5. Thank you. Hey, Mike Green, I'm going to send you a quick email, brother. I think you'd appreciate it. Turn. Oh. Yeah. 10 to 100 for brief piece number two is closed. What did you just spit out? Stickers. I'm trying to multitask here. We have spillage if you want to run three. Go for it. Alright. No, no. No. You're not being banned. No, sir. Why Why would I... What? I'm going to ban you for being a bridesmaid? Why would I do that? <laughs> Alright. All right. All right, so there's six spots left in briefcase number three. It's got to close by 7 p.m. All right, we're gonna run the we're gonna run one right now, guys. No, nah, don't worry, Mike. You're 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 always appreciated here. <laughs> Love it, Mike. Hey, taxes is not one of the, not against the rule. Yeah. Sassiness is not a bannable offense. <laughs> it might get you a short time out if I'm in a bad mood, but it's not a bannable offense. You can't put him in a timeout. I can put I anyone in a timeout. Time off I'm, yeah. I timed out John. Well, yeah. Because he needed to go home and, like, sleep. Yeah. If so, I'm just saying, if someone sasses me, I'm in a bad mood, they get a three minute timeout. They can come back. Don't worry. I think it's five minute timeout. Whatever. They're not banned. They're not banned. <laughs> Actually, you might be right. 300 seconds is five minutes, yeah. All right. Well, Dougie can do math. Sometimes. Going to law school. No math there. Me no like math. Just give me the, just give me the degree. Let me get my... I could be a lawyer. I Go. object. I object. Stop doing that. I have a counsel using legal jargon in everyday life. Oh, man. I object. You can't object to this. All right, guys, this is our second briefcase of the day. Good luck. That's a three. One, two, three. Victor Nugent. 
Victor, come on down. Victor, you get to select the second briefcase of the day. Dougie, you may have to reach out to Victor. Not sure. I don't think I see Victor chat a lot. Uh, yes, Stephen Garrett. That's Dougie objecting himself. Yes. I object. Dude, this is a christening. I can't object here. He wants number seven. You got it, Victor. By green, let me know how you like those emails, brother. All right, Dougie, we're running the first 40 wheel spins. Mm -hmm. I assume you wrote down the prizes like you do every week. So first place gets five extra wheel spins. Second place gets a wheel spin and $500 high roller spot. Third place gets a wheel spin and $250 high roller spot. Ingrained in the brain. I guess he learned from that one time. When you had to go back. All right, guys. First 40 wheel spins. Good luck. Uh, 11. Okay. Uh, Dion, you either can buy into the, the mystery briefcase, the, the briefcase for $1,000, or throughout the night we, all, we run promos like 10 and 100 or 20 and 50, and you spend, spend when those are live, you keep track of it off the grid, but you still get a chance to hit the briefcase. That's right. $1,000 purchase at checkout gets you basically, you skip the bonus where you, you know, chance with other people and you get to pick your own. If you spend 100 you get a chance of the 10 All right, so, Dougie, Matthew Townsend gets five extra wheel spins. Okay. William Zeltner gets the wheel spin and the 500 eye roller spot. Mm -hmm. Victor gets a... High roller, uh, 250 bonus spot and a wheel spin. Okay. Let me know when you got all that, and I will move on. Bill Zeltner gets a spin. And he said Victor. Johnny. Oh. Cool. Awesome. 500 is Bill Zeltner. Dion, also, if you have any other questions, don't be afraid to call our office. M80 is standing by the phone. 732-828-2261. She loves talking to people. Yep. Plus, you know, anybody with a wrench has been, like, an OG. Yeah. Anyone with a wrench can answer, you know, take, take, uh, what's the word? Uh. They've been here a while. They know their stuff. Yeah. They, they're authorized to answer questions. Tutorials. Just. Josh Andrews, I don't know. You're going to have to ask Dougie what is happening. Yeah, Where's... I think he just might, might have missed out. That sounds like something I would create for humor. <laughs> so... That's right. Steven G is oh, always... Oh, I saw that last night. Yeah. Right. He, he got prize made. Oh. In the separate... Huh? Oh. The 55 last night. Yes, yeah, you and Garrett got bridesmaids. Booga booga. Huh? 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 What? What? Hmm? What? Come again. No. <laughs> okay, good talk. <laughs> no. Good. No. no. I don't care. She's gonna be like, uh, and these two. I'll be like, I'm hi. I'm I'm your manager. Hi. Yeah. Nope. 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 Oh, can I have a can I have a day off? Nope. nope. 
sleep in the break room. Bring us bring a tent and some comfy things. Don't mind that guy. His name is Brian. He is won't... Steve Austin in the house? <laughs> what? What? How about some golf, guys? How about some golf? up a can of goat fuel. <laughs> no goat fuel for me. <laughs> oh, uh, my green ready. Ha! My green. Glad you enjoyed it, brother. Is, is he that way in on the action? Yep, he's in on the oh, action. Oh, yes. You can thank Sean Dooley. Yeah, Sean Dooley is... Written... Written, designed, and directed by Sean Dooley. <laughs> a comic book that's a movie, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You didn't, you know, Ben Ben signed a contract. He's in on that movie. I guess he must have missed it when he got the briefcase. Hit, uh, oh, don't worry. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I'm not on the end of that. Well, obviously, you're the one throwing the briefcase out. Details, details. 1981 Donruss Golf Pack, 170. Good luck, guys. Yeah, and a mini fridge. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can imagine us turning it into a movie. Because Ben would, you know, be filming it. And acting in it. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, no. If he's filming it, somebody has to play Ben. Or no, or Ben, ben would just, like, direct whoever's <laughs> filming it. The cameraman. Like, he's and directing it, and then all of a sudden gets a briefcase. You just see bed. Sean Dooley. No, no. Not believable. not believable. Take it again. <laughs> ben would just be like, oh. I was like, oh no, I can't. Oh, we have eight, we have eight pages. We have eight pages. Of this yeah, comic. Eight pages. <laughs> I think someone's working his way onto the uh, the BB team here. Eight pages is very, you know, substantial. He said we should have two more pages tomorrow. Is he like in the comic book field? Sean Dooley, I'm not sure. Sean Dooley, know. are you in the comic book field? If not, you should. Are you doing He's this? He's a retired artist. Um, you know, worth 48 million. Uh, <laughs> up front. <laughs> he, he's a Jersey boy too. Very cool. Oh my god, Ben made it too, and he's only been here for a few days. Oh, this is all about Ben and this Sam. Is, this is kind of like Ben and Sam's uh, work relationship. <laughs> Spot one, we got Fuzzy Zoller. Spot two, we got Calvin P. I think Pete. I this card collection has a plant based lock. <laughs> <laughs> Spot three, we got Mike. Oh, uh, we got Tom Kite. <laughs> Layton's reading it right now, Sean. Oh, yeah. And he's <laughs> giggling his face off. Spot four, we got Mike Raid. J5's melon off his <laughs> It's like breaking meets wrestling. Yeah. That's what it is. It's amazing. Spot five, Ray Floyd. Sean Dooley is not in the comic books or artistic. He just has a, good he just has a great sense of humor. And he does. Them. We'll take another look at it. We got uh, 1980 Tops. 60 Money Winners.
spot seven, we have Jerry Pate. Your bed getting messed up. <laughs> And that was our 1981 Donruss Golf Pack 170. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that was Gilmore freaking out. <laughs> like, oh Emily was like, who is that? I was like, wait till the next page. <laughs> Told me. Yeah. Like, I thought it might have been, but I thought he was looking at me weird. I was getting scared. <laughs> Doug, the way he depicted you, you look like you'd be on Sons of Anarchy. I know. Like, totally. I know. That's fantastic. I love it. Thank you, Sean Dooley. I enjoyed that thoroughly. Oh, yeah. There's, new, there's another one, too. Another panel, too. <laughs> Tom O'Connor, if it ever makes it to public consumption, it'll have to get cleaned up a smidgy. Yeah, a, little <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Although, I think it's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. We're going to have, like, the private copy. Yeah. And then the public copy. <laughs> the uncensored copy. Yeah. Layton loved it, Sean. Oh, he did. He was cracking his face up. All right. 2019 Panini Illusions uh, Personal 136 for Ken Graf. Good luck, Ken. Yeah, Dougie, good luck, can we get an update on the offlines? What time they have to sell out? How many spots, etc.? It's not PG. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's definitely rated. It's uh, definitely rated R at least. It's PG thirteen. For violence and language. No, no, no. Not rated R the, for the, right, of so the rule of thumb is, if there's one F word, it could be PG thirteen. If it's multiple F words, rated R. Okay, then it's rated R. Yeah. It's rated R. <laughs> oh yeah, that was totally rated R, yeah. and such a great movie. If Ben didn't get an official nickname, I don't know how I can't call him Hood Ornament now. You can call him Hood Ornament. I think it's accurate. Go ahead. Eventually, he'll be breaking Mondays and Wednesdays. Yeah. Go ahead and call him Hood Ornament. Yeah. Unless it's ten Well, he'll be he'll be here tomorrow. Yeah, he's not breaking tomorrow. Nah. I'm just, he he's not. He's not a prime night breaker. Uh, he could still be Hood Ornament. Oh, that's true. As soon as he walks, what's what's up, Hood Ornament? <laughs> He'll be like, what? What? <laughs> and then I'll have to show him the comic. We got a auto for Ken Graf. We have Gerald Henderson Senior Auto. This is a trophy collection auto. That's true. That's true, Sean. That's time. What's up, baby? This is Kristen. Hello. Kristen. How you doing? Hey, He's live. Thomas Bryant Orange. Hey, hi, Kristen. I'm Don. Oh, nice to meet Don't worry about that. Right. He's busy. He's busy. <laughs> I'm gonna throw things at you. Uh, I'll chat to him on the side. Kevin Durant. Dorian Finney Smith. Markel Fultz. We have Bruno Fernando, rookie. She seems so shy. How did she do the She was shy too when she started. How did she do the game for an interview with someone? It's okay, you're on camera. <laughs> Admiral, she wasn't on camera. Schofield, rookie. You could hear her voice. 
she said hi, you know, and she at least got a word out. Back to back? I got to break it up a little bit, Josh. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, rookie. We have a lot of, uh, you know, we got a lot of uh, people who come here for the vintage. If I go on a run of modern, they get bored. Yeah. So. It can be the next one after vintage. Yeah, exactly. It can be the next one, I but I got I to gotta do a vintage pack in between. Yeah. All right. Actually, I should. Plus, we're trying to get all, the, all caught up with all the, the backlog of packs and boxes. Mm. Okay. Yes. If it if it's perfectly like yes. Okay. Sometimes it's a little things, I guess. That's right, Steven G. Everything else I have to put a sticker on saying where, where it is and I'm like it's gonna get lost. It's only gonna get lost. Yeah. But I will put one thirty three aside. Dougie. Illusions one thirty three. Did that break already? Did it not break? And what time? I don't. I'm. I'm checking the chat. Did you put in the chat? Seven p.m. You did. You put it in there. Mm -hmm. Six spots left. Has to close at seven. I will go copy it for the peoples. Oh, that's a good idea, Mike Green. That's a good idea. We could. I'll talk to Gilmore. See if we can make a forum for it. Password protected. Hmm. That'd be cool. Oh, uh, I have illusions here in the west. Oh, gotcha. No problem, Charles. Charles, do you get a chance to read your email? Oh, okay. Well, there we go. There you go, Josh. Yep, Josh. It'll break later tonight. Oh, and stay tuned, guys. Police Academy trivia. I'm going home. And granted, I can't win, but I love the Police Academy movies. So I'm excited for the the west tonight. Yo, come here and say that to my face. Like Don't look at me with that tone of voice. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. I will snap my car off. Don't make me. Don't make me. Yeah, apparently Ben's new nickname should be Hood Ornament. <laughs> That's how I'm going to greet him tomorrow, John. <laughs> Yo, what up, Hood Ornament? What's up, Hood <laughs> Ornament? <laughs> <laughs> so pe pending that, yeah? Um, how are we looking on the offline? Six spots left. How much time left? Uh, nine minutes. Uh, that's something that should definitely be in the chat. I just posted in the chat. Yeah, we're right after Charles said he had the pack. <laughs> Guys! There's six spots left in the 10 at 100, number three. Six spots left. We already have four spots down. Has to close by 7 p.m. Uh, so we need to step up, close this bad boy. Uh, I am, I can add a second and third place prize, but we need to close it. Second place, Dougie, will be four wheel spins. Third place will be two wheel spins, Dougie. I like it. Guys, I'm giving away six wheel spins on top of a $1,000 briefcase. All we have to do is close it out. You know what, Dougie? I am feeling crazy. Feeling dangerous. So dangerous. We're going to add a wheel spin to first place. First place gets a $1,000 briefcase and a wheel spin. Like How do you like me now? How do you like me now? <laughs> Nobody asked you. Huh? What? Huh? What? Exactly. Ben, hey guys, Ben, the content king is here, S10. Okay, hood ornament, let's get breaking. <laughs> All right, hood ornament, you need to chill out. <laughs> Wait, is he in here? What? No. 
no, no, no. no. Monty's like, I can't wait. Because he's like, Ben's going to walk in. Oh, okay. Ben the content king is here. And I'm going to be like, what's up, Hood Ornament? <laughs> Can you help Matthew? He's on mute. You typing it up for him? Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't even, you know what? It's all right. It's a personal for Matthew. And he's watching live, so it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kamikaze, I'm sure it's somewhere. Has to be. Yeah, I don't remember, like, when your... It was... 2019? I don't know. It was definitely within the first year I joined. Yeah. I don't even know what... I, I mean, I remember mine. I still, I, yeah, you just kind of, like, randomly... Al Baker Super Action. John just let me start breaking one day because um, I have like a long history with car handling cards, right? So I didn't have to train. And you're a streamer. Yeah. Well, that has really doesn't have anything to do with knowing how to handle cardboard. Who am I looking for in eighty one, Dougie? Joe Montana, rookie. Montana. Right, well, we got a Walter Payton. Probably Kamikaze. Honestly, Mike Green, that's kind of how it happens. I remember it like it was yesterday. Really? We got Ray Griffin. Yeah, uh, one day, Johnny uh, was like, Sam, want to break a pack? I said, sure, I broke a pack. Then the following, like, main night, um, Mike, uh, he who has to not be named, um, was, like, was like looking to for an excuse to get up. Like, you know, and I was like, he was, like, looking for John. I was like, if you need to get up, I was like, I can break a pack. Yeah. And he goes, what? It's <laughs> like, really? And I was like, yep. And I just sat down and started breaking. I mean, that was pretty good, but that wasn't early enough. Well, yeah, I know. my voice don't go that high. I know. John James. It's not whiny enough. Don McCauley. Curtis Dickey, super action. How are we looking on that offline, Dougie? Four minutes. I need updates. Don Smith. Dion jumped in. Five spots left. Five spots left. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Guys, five spots left. I added ridiculous second, third. I even buffed up first. That has to close in the next four minutes, though, or it, it does not get given away. We're halfway there. We need five spots to go down, guys. Five spots. Guys, you have my word that, uh, you know, I'm doing all I can to close this bad boy. If we are, like, one or two spots away by seven, I may extend it. But we're not going to be doing this for every promo. I need some commitments from people if we're closing this or not. Uh, uh, keep an eye on the chat, Dougie. There's questions. Doug France, I know of he who shall not be named, but would love the backstory one day on why uh, said man can no longer be named. I want the juicy details. Monty, you got to get those details from L Train. He's the only one cla with the authorization to release those details. It's classified. It's classified. Restricted access. Andre Thompson. Get out of here. You're not authorized to share those details. J5 level. No. Oh, yeah. That one even makes Four spots left. Herb Orvis. Don't look at me with sad. Don't you look at me with that look. Roland Hooks. It's just so hard when you, like... You fake this authority. You were respect my authority. That's not behind you. You were respect that. You were respect that behind you. 
That's what I hear when John talks. <laughs> That's my internal John voice. Okay, good. Here we go. Here we go. You and me. You and me. Right now. Right now. Uh, jo uh, ah, John. Uh, Doug. Need an update. Two minutes. Update. Two minutes, please. Four spots remaining. Is, who's the last purchase? Oh, look. We got Matthew Towns and two spots. Yep. Two spots left? Two spots. Guys, two spots left. We got to close it by 7 p.m. Two spots left. Let's give away our third briefcase of the evening. Please, poor favor. Speaking of South Park, tonight is the big vaccine... It's tonight at 8. I want to watch, but I'm not going to be able to. That is going to be a big episode. Oh. I cannot watch, wait. Network, so. oh. <laughs> I don't like South Park, but I love their political stuff. I love where can I watch that? Commentary stuff. Well, they're on what? Comedy Central? So funny. But where can what I watch it on the internet? I'm sure somebody will have it. Uh, I wonder if Hulu. Because I know South Park used to be on Netflix. Oh, yeah. I think it's on <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. It's definitely not on Netflix. No, they, they used to be on Netflix. Yeah, it might be Hulu. It might be Hulu. Mm -hmm. He is not Stephen G. He likes to pretend he is. You. You. Exactly. You're a figment of, of my imagination. Whoa. What? We might be having some big name. I can't say because it's it's pre stages, but okay, Her. okay. Her. You can't find out through your camera, I guess. Yeah, this is. I off. can mute the mic. <laughs> Hold on. All right, S South Park is on HBO Max. That's pretty okay. All right. So look at see, I have Hulu. I'm trying to see if it's on there. Even if it is, you can't watch. Well, you can't watch it live. It just be the day after. Cause that's what I do with SBU. I'm gonna have to find a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Oh. No. It's everything else, like Family Guy, is on there. Huh. What's the new episode? Today? So HBO Max, okay. Awesome. And I do have that. Exactly. We have the capacity to move the mic. That's how I end up doing half the concerts without the mic on. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Curiosity killed the cat. No satisfaction did not bring it back. That's not how it works. 2020 Bowman. Can you check out Paul, Dougie? Paul John McNeely. This is your personal 2020 Bowman Chrome Mega. Good luck. I see your purchase. Let me see if I had you in any of the briefcases. Let's do it. Okay, so there's one spot left. One spot left. Guys, there's one spot left in the ten and a hundred. It's so it was supposed to close two minutes ago. Two minutes ago. You guys have until seven oh five. One spot. One spot remaining. Johnny, you staying here all night? Okay, plenty. You can leave. No, I mean, unless he wants to stay. No, it's just because he's early night. I don't know, I think he likes hanging out with us. 
Did you... So, are you staying all night? Huh? You don't know? He wants to stay. He doesn't want to stay. Well, can you at least order Zeke? Did you, though? I don't ever believe you anymore. You always lie to me. Keegan, Akeen, Karen, Paris. We got Sam Huff, 207 to 250. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, we got Tanner Hoduck and Cole Roderer. Roderer. Too many R's. Alright, Dion, are your personal packs ready for you? It's funny that there's a handbook for two days long. It's funny that there's a handbook. Um, Doug, you did the offline clothes? I'm still waiting on that last $100 we, entry. You should be talking about that. Ryan uh, delayed. I need one more entry for $100 to put, give away seven extra wheel spins. You got one minute. Don't let this explode. Anyone? It's going to be 7.05 any second. Gonna be 7.05 any second. Are we gonna let this uh, just, you know, expire? Well, ex explode. Mike Trout, Tony Goslin, rookie. Anyone? Bueller, Bueller. Anyone? Is my mic on? I think it's turned up. Oh. No, it, it is. I'm just. I don't know. All right. Tell, tell him, Dougie, 706, it's done. We need one person to step up. We need one person to keep this from closing. It is now 705. The hour is upon us. Ronald Cunha Jr. Does anyone want to keep this from exploding? Scott Priestley just got here. What do we need? <laughs> Scott Priestley is like a hero. He just shows up. What are we, what's going on? Scott Priestley, we have a 10 and 100. Uh, one spot. We need one spot. Yep. It was supposed to close at 7 o'clock. I have kindly extended it. We got Maurice Dubon rookie and Brendan McKay rookie. First place gets one wheel spin and uh, a $1,000 briefcase. Second place gets... Four extra wheel spins. Four wheel spins. Third place gets two wheel spins. Third place gets two wheel spins. We're giving away it's loaded. I'm basically giving away seventeen hundred dollars worth of stuff. I know. For the price of a thousand, but nobody seems to want to close it. And all we need is one more person to spend a hundred dollars. Zach Collins, Ricky. Ronald Acuna Jr. Anthony K. Ricky. Bresdar Gratterall Ricky. Luis Robert Ricky. Anyone, Dougie? I keep refreshing like every 30 seconds. Maybe when I'm left or not. Nobody. It's. Oh, maybe Stephen Garrett. Scott Priest just said, stand by. Stand by. All right, first come, first come, first serve. All right, somebody's making a purchase. Justin Dunn, rookie. All right, Scott Priestley did it. All Close. right, Scott Priestley, the hero we need but don't deserve. Zach Collins, rookie. Close it, Dougie. Send me that list. Aristides Acuna, rookie. There we go. Some Aristides action. 
Steven G was willing to step up as well. Wow, we appreciate Steven Garrett. All right. Kyle Lewis, Ricky. I got the list. All right. Wait, if Steven G bought, we'll start another one. Yep, he did. All right, Steven G, we're starting another one with you, man. Guys, 10 and 100. 10 out of 100. For briefcase number for four. Briefcase number four. Okay. Steven G stepped up. He wanted to make sure you guys didn't miss out. Right. Yeah, we're running another one starting with you, Steven G. So, guys, let's make sure this one doesn't close. Steven G was going to jump in. Make sure you guys were taken care of. Let's make sure we take care of Steven G. 10 and 100. Running until... 7.45, Dougie. Give him a little extra time. 7.45. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right, nine spots left. Steven Garrett kicks it off. Zach Gallon, rookie. Justin Dunn, rookie. Zach Gallon, rookie. Trey Mancini. Steven Strauss, what's up, buddy? Shohei Otani. All right, guys, that's a 2020 Bowman Chrome Mega Box 44. Did your boxes come out? Huh? 44? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm a man of many accents. <laughs> I'm an actor. Only on Saturdays. Mark, you remember Mark, right? He uh, plays a Boston um, criminal on Saturdays. On your D&D? Yeah. yeah. It's hilarious. Because every time he starts talking, I want to start talking like that. And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm doing a different character. Uh, Adrian, that never... I thought... Adrian, I thought we talked about this. That never filled up, man. It never closed. I feel like we had this conversation. Yeah. No problem. So I just so I finished episode six of Wandavision, John. I now believe that Vision is a walking corpse. Corpse. He's not actually alive. Well, I know at least part of half that's right. You know, he is a walking corpse. No, but I mean, like, I don't think he's alive. I think he's. I think the personality that like we see. Is like one that uh, of Wanda's creation. No, I know, but I meant like, did like she bring him back to life, or did she like, yeah? You know. No, I think, but I think it's a fabrication of her own. Yeah, you know, doing. I have two more episodes to go find out that's true. <laughs> They actually have a a zomb a zombie verse. Uh it's not a spoiler. It's uh it's my theory. It's a theory, a game theory. Actually, it's a TV show theory. I think it was 115. Yep, 115. Finish. 
race. Here we go. Oh man, what to pick, what to pick. A leap to remember. We already did Marble Centauri. Maybe Cosmic Chaos. Cosmic Chaos. That looks cool. All right, guys. This is the Marble Race. Good luck, Dougie. Top three, you're going to get prizes. Okay, it's another space one. That makes sense. It's cosmic. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's a space station. That looks so cool. Are you looking, Emily? I'll, I'll oh, tilt it. So cool. Look at this. And they're off. Yeah, me too. Danny Casbier is in the lead. James Lewis. Okay, here they go. Look at James Lewis taking this ramp like a champ. <laughs> we got Danny Casbier and James Lewis battling it out. And... Oh, whoa, okay. We got James Lewis keeping the lead. That's crazy. Oh, someone just took it. Ryan Wilbeck just took the lead out of nowhere. He came flying through. Oh, man. I hate these pegs with a passion. I hate them. Well, they, they do their job. <laughs> yeah. Danny Casbier in the lead. Ryan Wilbeck. Dude, where's the rest of the map? Oh, okay, that's the finish line. Okay, okay. Whoa, don't fall. Okay, okay. Dion is in the lead in the final stretch of the race. It's going to be close. We got so right behind Dion. And Dion is our winner. Followed by James Lewis in second. So in third. Dougie, write that down. Dion Williams in first. James Lewis in second. And in third, we have So Chi Wong. Um, I believe first place got a 500 high roller spot, mm -hmm. second place got a 250 bonus spot, mm -hmm. and third place got an after party. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Ah, uh, that's right, Neon. And five months dollar bonus on the website. You can check out check it out on our website. Yep. All right, ten and a hundred for a briefcase, guys. Good luck. We got an eight. Eight. 
Okay, Dion! Back to back wins. Dion, you get a $1,000 briefcase and a wheel spin, Dougie. Scott Priestley gets four wheel spins. And Paul John McNeil gets two wheel spins. All right, yeah, run it up, Dion. Dion, go ahead and select a $1,000 briefcase, brother. Dougie's taking care of those wheel spins, guys. We'll close at seven, right? Yes. Yeah, that's yep. Dion, what number would you like, brother? Four, yours, brother. No problem, my friend. Um, Dougie, how are we looking on our offline? We got about 25 minutes left. There are still nine spots left. Nine spots left. All right, guys. Here's what we're going to do. I want to make sure we take care of Steven G, who was willing to jump in that promo for you guys. I don't want to see that explode on Steven G. Dougie, we're going to run an offline. We're going to run another offline, okay? This is going to be a 36 at 50, Dougie. 36 at 50. Everyone gets a pack. Everyone gets a pack. This is 89 baseball. This is like super sealed, guys. Look at that. Fresh. That is a beautiful box uh 36 packs first come first serve every 50 dollars you spend on the website you're gonna get a 89 puzzle pack a donruss baseball pack uh this is gonna run alongside the um my brain is not working 10 and 100 10 and 100 no problem steven g trying to make sure it closes for you brother um so you got that dougie here you go my friend Oh, it's going to sell out tonight. Yeah, I have no doubt. I'll do the video tomorrow. Yep. Along with all those other ones. Yeah. What else is new? Your hair color? That's pretty new. It's like a month old. The, the end of January. Time flies. I liked it two days after, after, after growing. Yeah, I liked like the under... Yeah. The darker... Hair color under it. <laughs> All right, let's see y'all. Nineteen seventy eight tops hockey wax pack one sixty eight. Good luck, guys. That's a ten. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. No problem, Stephen G. Take care, brother. Dion, this is a good community. We all root for each other, so. Spot one. Tom Bladen. Hey, it might just be my screen, but the is the order screen, like, glitching out for anyone? Like, it just, it looks like it's glitching out on my side. Spot one. Spot two, scoring leaders. It's not. I don't see it out on Like it, it just says a bunch of. Oh. I'm not into that. Get it? They're getting rowdy. <laughs> Spot four per Olov Brasar. My kids, Mike Green's kids, don't get rowdy. Stop that. Yeah. Spot five, John Davidson. Get him a lozenge. Just throw it at his face. Spot six, Phil Meyer. Go get him stomping. We got... Gary McAdam. <laughs> Spot eight, we got Ivan Bodervev. What are the? Oh my gosh. Oh, the two-year-old they had. Spot. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Did you want my attention? He said headphones in. What? Did you want my attention? No. You sure? I'm leaving. No. You're like, damn. <clears throat> there he goes again. <laughs> Spot nine, Pierre Bouchard. Spot ten, Elaine Daigle. <laughs> Are you getting sick? No, he's doing He wants my attention. Bill Lockhead. <coughs> Don't you cough at me. <laughs> he definitely coughed at you on that last one. <sighs> I'm going to have to hurt him. That was our 78 Tops hockey pack. Co-starring J5. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was more like co-starring J5's coughs. Yeah. 
Booga booga booga. Are you waiting to eat or are you? Uh, as soon as Johnny's done okay. doing his thing. Whatever that is. I've got about. I've got six. No, I got seven RJ Barrett moments. I got five Tatum moments. Four Culvers. Those are going to be so good. Are you, uh, how are we looking on the briefcases? Not briefcases. Well, actually, you know, both. How are we looking on both? Still no movement. Nine, nine spots left. Really? Yeah, Dion, the marketplace is back open for top shots. I'm scooping up all the RJ Barrett's and Jason Tatum's. They're dirt cheap right now. Those are those prices are way too low for those guys. Way too low. Marketplace is up and running. Yeah, man. I'm. I just picked up a couple more. You can only do a transaction every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes, I'm just checking out with one or the other. Um, where did John go? Keep an eye out on those pre packs or That's a good point, my green. I hope they do. Honestly. I hope they go lower. Quick pickups. Easy plus. Easy, easy, lemon squeezy. Get a glossy bossy. Like uh yeah, Dion, I've scored I've scored two I've scored two series two uh packs. I've scored uh I scored the Seeing Stars pack and I got the pre the pre order pack. So I've I've gotten four packs in total. Tyler, not at all. Not at all. I think Giannis is a hold. Because I think Giannis is the future of the NBA. That's my opinion. And then now you have 70 to buy packs with, Tyler. Honestly, that's a smart dude. That's a smart move, Tyler. I, I would do that. I would do that every day of the week. I sold two moments a little cheaper than I wanted to. Just so I had uh, money to play with because how cheap these other moments are. I'm just not reinvesting any more of my money. I'm just going to keep playing with the dapper money. And then when I can withdraw, then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to probably sell a bunch of moments off and withdraw, take some money off the table. First thing I would do is take out your original, your original investment. And just play my original $18? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm gonna take out. I'm gonna take like half of the money off the table. Yeah. Um, because I've already won. Yeah. So. I'm saying the first thing. You yeah. Your investment and then never take it yourself. Yeah, I'm gonna take out like my investment and then some. Yeah. 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 There you go, Mike Green. Absolutely. I keep going back. I have. I I got a Kawhi seeing star, and I keep going back and forth between. Holding it long term, like when I say long term, I mean like probably like six months or selling it now. I just don't know because um, I know like I, I have a really like I have a big feeling that all these seeing star moments are going to go up uh, because it's the first of their it's the first release of them. So like I'm I'm just I'm it's tough for me. It's tough for me. I don't know. Breaking news. The Spurs and LaMarcus Aldridge, 
Aldridge have agreed to mutually part ways. San Antonio is working on a trade partner for him. Oh. Huh? So, he won't be a free agent. Well, he's going to go to San Antonio. Or, or he might go to somewhere else. Cool. Yeah. Just talk about Wichita. Yeah. Uh, I gotta see what Johnny's doing out of Texas doofus. Dougie, you can hop on. If Johnny wants to hop on, he can, but okay. you can hop on. Try to keep them updated on that offline. Okay. Because, you know, we want that. Closed. All right. So, guys, there are nine spots left in that offline um, for a chance at a $1,000 briefcase. You know, we don't want. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Philip Myerson, thank you for your purchase. What's up, Mike Green? Okay, Mike Green's kids, if you can hear me, don't tear up the house. There, I tried. I did my best. The $500 high roller, absolutely, Dion. Um, all right, so let me go to the website. I know you're, this is your second or third day with us. Okay, so the five hundred dollar high roller. Okay, so, um, all right. So for the next one thousand entries, there you have to either you spend five hundred dollars, you get a high roller. You also can win them in bonuses in which you want a high roller spot. Um, so once it fills, we random the list, and the main winner of the random. Gets 1961 Tops Mickey Mantle PSA 4. This is a very, very good card to win. So. That's for you, that's to win. That's What's the cereal? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's on the website. I mean, it's a PSA 4. So. There's the Mantle. And it's on our website, too, if you want to check out the, pro um, the details. But, uh, yeah, every $500 you either spend or you win a spot um, gets you into it. And then once it fills up, we random the list, and somebody gets to take Mickey Mantle home with them. So I'll put that in there. Yep, you're in the drawing to win the card. Correct. Yep. So... Um, Dion, since you're on, why not do a pack for you? This is, you're on, I might as well do your Chronicles pack. Okay. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> all right all right D all right this is a 2019 chronicles nba personal pack this is for dion we don't have to send any lists i don't have to send any emails because it's all for you all right good luck dion while you know j5 and s10 have like snuggle time back there See what we can get for you here. Okay. All right. So, Cheeseburger James here. James Harden. We have... We have CP3. Back when he was on OKC. Huh. Here's Sam's favorite player. Giannis. 
Auntie Takumbo. Sam is the reason why I know how to say Giannis' full name, like last name. So we'll put Giannis in a sleeve. Yeah. And we got... Here is Shy Gilius Alexander from OKC. Yeah, you will definitely like it here. We have a lot of fun. Here is the rookie of Cam Reddish. We will put that in the sleeve. Cam Reddish. And then we have oh, Cam's teammate. Here's Trey Young, second year. We'll put Trey in a sleeve. Trey Young. Okay. And then there's Terrence Davis for the Raptors. There's Jarrett Culver from the Timberwolves. We'll sleeve up Jarrett. Jarrett Culver. Here is Kobe White. Luminance. You're second day and you're loving it. Oh, I'm glad you're loving it, my, uh, Dion. This is uh, this is a fun place to come to. You know, when the pandemic first started ha um, last year, when sports got shut down, you know, a lot of people, you know, came to us because we were their source of, you know, entertainment, a distraction from everything. Yeah. Here's Matisse Thibault. And we've been just trying to entertain you guys ever since. And we're glad that, you know, new people are coming their, our way. And uh, the spins, so you're going to, okay, so it's tomorrow, it's going to be done tomorrow. Um, M80 is going to do the spins. Um, you can see the video. If you get a hot hit, she will call you. So keep your phones handy and you'll get a choice. Yep, we do the wheel spins offline typically because there's just so many of them. They're very time consuming. Yes. So if you wheel under the YouTube videos under catch up bonus to 80. That's right. You'll be able to find all the wheels. Um, and yeah, if you got a hot hit, we reach out to you via phone to let you choose a, a form of our hot hit prizes. That's we right. Listed on the website for prizes under. What the lady said. Here's Taco Fall. Here is Goga Batazi. Goga, Goga Batazi. A lot of rookies in this pack. Okay. We have Jackson Hayes Flux. Hey, James the Threat Actor. Guys, by the way, if you are into uh, vintage music, if you're into, you know, um, if you're into records or just mu music in general, you know, looking for anything good, um, Karma Records in Indianapolis, Indiana is where you want to go to. Um, if you can't, if you're looking for something and you can't find it, Jim will hook you up. He uh, and also they have really, really, really comfortable hoodies. I own one. M80 has one. We all have the T-shirts. They're awesome. Um, here is Jackson Hayes again and Matisse Thibel. Looks like element card. Okay. My man, that's right. I'm basically Jim Ector's hype man. I, I'm, I basically do, you know. You do it every single time Jim Ector's name is said. Karma Records! Karma Records! Go to Karma, but I mean, I'm not doing it because, you know, he's not paying me anything. <laughs> Like, legitimate. Like, Karma Records, is, he's got good stuff. He takes care of his customers. You know, it, it's the real deal. I mean, I have a couple Tom Petty records sitting at home. Um, brand new, wrapped up. Uh, haven't figured out what to do with them yet. 
But no, hey, Jim will take care of you. I pr like it's this isn't. A, I'm not being paid. There's no script. Jim's good people, and yeah, Karma Records in Indy. All right, guys, that was 2019 Chronicles NBA Personal Pack 183 for Dion in the books. see if we have any movement on that all right doug hintley and got in so that's one all right five spots down so five to go in our 10 and 100 for a briefcase still got 182 let's say why not Make it nice and easy. Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, this is 2019 Chronicles personal pack again for Dion. Good luck, Dion. Hope uh, get a little more fire. Your last one, pretty good, you know. I'm hoping to get you a Zion, a Jaw. Alright. Okay. Alright. We have Brandon Ingram from the Pelicans. Right team, wrong player. I'm trying. I'm trying, bud. Alright, Jackson Hayes. As soon as Dougie gets the videos recorded, we'll do them. We'll we'll yep. Yeah, I'm likely we're the ones that I plan to do for tomorrow. Um, Jackson Hayes, 79, um, 79 hockey, sixty three baseball, and eighty seven Fleer because that's on the verge of selling out. We'll do it on tomorrow. Yep, yeah. Andre Drummond, who is expected to be either bought out or traded by the Cavs. I know the Lakers and the Nets all have interest in him. Ooh, here we go. R.J. Barrett. Prestige. R.J. Barrett's game has improved so much with Tom Thibodeau taking over for the Knicks. Yeah, no problem, Mike. R.J. Okay. And then we have Chris Middleton. Eighty nine Fleer, I think we have we're waiting on those because I know they've been so popular lately. Um, PJ Washington Jr. for the Hornets. Yeah, eighty nine Fleer, I think we're waiting on. Um, the price of M Michael Jordan in a PSA uh, nine and ten, especially, are unreal. Okay, here's Nikhil Alexander Walker. Yep, she is here. Cover those up. Nikhil Alexander Walker. Here is Cameron Johnson. Playbook for the Phoenix Suns, who have been tremendous. You know, one of the top teams in the in the West now. With uh, you know the addition, I feel like CP3 has been a big difference to that team. And Devin Booker is just one of the best players in the game now. Here's another Cameron Johnson, Luminance. Okay. And then Cam Reddish. Okay. Just leaving up all the rooks. Here is a Kobe White playbook. Stay there, stay there. Kobe White and that massive afro he's got. I hear Sam laughing in the distance, so something good's going on. Here's Carson Edwards. Oh yeah, probably. Sign up. 
It's a different way to spell Carson, as in my son, whose name is Carson, but he, we do the traditional way, with an O. All right. Wow. Here is Cam Reddish. Hometown Heroes. How do they spell Carson? Huh? How do they spell Carson? With an E. C-A-R-S-E-N. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, here is PJ Washington Jr. Recon. It was my misspelling that got my, my, my niece's uh, middle name, Noel. Oh. Uh, the song. So N -O -E -L -L -E. N-O-E-L-L-E. Yeah, I spelled it N-O-E-L. Oh, like, like Noel. Noel, that's how when you write, when you write it for uh. the Christmas song. It's Noel, that's just N-O-E-L. Oh, uh, okay. That's how it's the first Noel. When I made all the baby showers and put out the, the, her name, I spelled it. Noel. Nice. So Goga I, Batazzi. I determined how her middle name was spelled because I couldn't spell, I didn't spell her name and spell her as a It's understandable. All right, Dion, that was your personal 2019 Chronicles NBA pack 182. Oh, we, we actually, um, Vintage Breaks partnered with a company called Gem Mint. If you go to gemmint.com slash vintage breaks, you can do bulk orders through them to PSA. That's right. All right, let's see how... And on our website, VintageBreaks.com, at the top, uh, I believe it's uh, PSA Submissions. If you click on that link, it'll take you to Gem Mint. That's right. Okay. And that's the company we, rec we work with. Strongly recommended. Okay. Let's go make trout hunting. I'm searching for trouty. Dougie's the one prepping, uh, prepping, uh, breaks, so. <laughs> I know, Dion. I'm just... We're trying to get all caught up on everything. We're, we are, we have made big headway, though. After tonight with our breaking and BB West, Last, Brady, yeah. we should be close to, getting like, there. like 50 to, 50, 60 to 70 breaks, so we're definitely getting, we're getting caught there. up. We're getting there. So. We are getting there. I right. appreciate all of your patience. And yes. <laughs> all right, guys. This is 2011 Bowman Draft Value Pack number 12. We are looking for a Mike Trout rookie. All right. Three on the random. It's been a fun ride so far. That's, yeah. I mean, this is definitely better than the days, I mean, probably pre-Emily, but like days where like we'd be sitting around like, hey, guys, what do you want to close out? I've been here for some closeout stuff, but since November, we have not been. We have no. Not been and I will gladly take this, you know, busy, it's good, business is good. You guys got, always got something fun to watch. Always something fun to watch, you're entertained. Nope. There we go, it's been a little while since I've had to send an email for... <sighs> okay. Alright. Alright, guys. Fishing for Trouty, that's right. And actually, I bought a Mike Trout shirt. Um, it's the first Yankee, non-Yankee shirt I've owned ever for, like, baseball. So, okay. So this will be spot number one. <sighs> this bum. Jose Altuve. All five foot one of them. Nice, he's 5'6". Oh, and, and somewhere you could probably spot his buzzer, you know. All right, spot number two. Here is Steve Ciszek, Sidewinder. Spot number three. Here is Mike Nikias for the Mets. Who on the over under over are projected for ninety three wins this year, and I think that's a pretty good one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I saw one too, but you know. It's funny that that's the card he got. <laughs> <laughs> Spot number four here's Michael Stutz for the Phillies. Spot number five we have an auto. This is Jordan Sheffield. We could put the auto in a 
Jordan Sheffield. Ooh. Spot number six, here's Tyler Anderson. First Bowman card. Auto. Okay. Spot number seven, CJ McElroy. Charles McElroy. First Bowman card. For the Cardinals. I'm not gonna lie, a little jealous the Cardinals got Nolan Arenado. I really want him for the Yankees, but that's okay. Here is first Bowman of Daniel Vogelbach for the Cubbies. Okay. Here is spot number nine, J.B. Shuck for Houston. Okay, man. You ain't in there. Spot number ten, ooh, this guy, Mikey Matuk for the Rays, current um, American League champions. Oh, well, they're gonna take a step back because they, you know, I know they traded, uh, they traded Blake Snell. Charlie Morton left as a free agent. Mikey Matuk. Okay, spot number eleven. Here is Andrew Brown. And spot number 12, rookie of Brandon Crawford from the San Francisco Giants. Good player, good shortstop. Okay. Brandon Crawford. All right. All right, guys, that was our 2011 Bowman Draft Value Pack number 12. Unfortunately, no Mike Trout. That's okay. Ooh. All right, in the books. Let's see. Let's see how we're doing on the offline. All right, so that's one. Five, six, seven. So three spots left in the the ten and a hundred for a briefcase. Okay. Right. Um let's see. That's right, Dion. You said you had another personal. All right. So I know you're on, Dion. Um, okay. Let's do your personal. Because I'm a man of the people. All right. Um, let's see if we can cut, trim that down. There we go. Dion Williams. All right, Dion. I hope I pull some fire for you. Here we go. All right, guys. This is 2019 Panini Illusions Basketball Fat Pack number 139. A personal for Dion Williams. He is second day with vintage breaks, and he is having a blast. Brian Wilbeck, what's up, buddy? Good to see you on. I hear the pitter patter of little feet. All right. So, Dion, good luck. Huh? 
Hi, John. You okay? Okay. Did you kill us, Tan? Is he not coming back? I gotta talk with him. You gotta talk with him? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, guys, so I'm breaking until further notice. By the way, guys, I like long walks on the beach. I love string cheese, mozzarella especially. Um, lately, I've been drinking Gatorade. And you guys are an awesome community. Seriously. You guys are amazing people. Oh, yeah. You know, Ryan, if you know. What did I do to Sam? I didn't do anything. I just took over. I just, I sat here. Um, Don Russ. Russ, I'll have to, I'll have to look. I mean, I'd be searching if I was behind there. So I'll have to look when I get a uh, free moment. So Andrew Wiggins. But I will definitely write it down and take a look. Um, Andre Drummond. So, do the best I can. Here's Drew Holiday. Mike Conley, who was an all-star this past uh, weekend with the Jazz. Here's Kelly Obre Jr. Yeah, no, totally. I just... Here's Jalen Noel for the Timberwolves. Looks like an orange rookie. Sleeve up Jalen Noel. Yeah. Yep. Free moment I have to, Russ. I will, uh, I'll take a look. That's all I can do is look. Oh, 17 spots. Yeah, that's right, Nick. Uh, Matthew. 17 spots left in a set that we legitimately just released last night. That's You guys are savages. Here's future Hall of Famer Carmelo Anthony. Matthew Della, Della Vadova for the Cavs was on that 2016 team that came back down 3-1. Torian Prince. Nasir Little for the Blazers. We'll sleeve up. It's a rookie. We'll sleeve him up. We got another rookie coming up. Would that break tomorrow if if closed? Possibly. I know we have two. We have the, the 79 hockey and the 63 baseball that are... I have to record those tomorrow. I'll probably record 87 too because it's close. I can't guarantee that it'll definitely go, go for the show. Yeah. So, Karen, Cameron Johnson? I can't guarantee it'll go tomorrow. But... Yeah, the, the first two will definitely because they've, mm -hmm. they were sold out first. They sold out early. Yeah. So I can't promise anything, but I do plan to record the video at least. Get after it the other two after the other two, yes. And I mean, let me tell you, doing the 1970 video, 720 cards. Ooh, shoulder was a little sore. Terrence, man, for the Clippers. All right, all right, Dion from New Zealand. That was your personal. 2019 Panini Illusions Pack number 139 in the books. There you go, D Rush. Yes. Let me see how we're doing. I have a bonus to announce. You have a bonus? It is on the grid. Yes, our okay. $50 Ooh. Wednesday Ooh. Wild Bonus. Ooh. Or should I call it Wild Wednesday? Wild Wild, wild Wednesday. Because you snatched it. Would you put it backwards? Yeah. Wild, 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 wild Wednesday. Wild Wednesday bonus. Wild Wednesday. Okay. It is from 8.30. Sorry. Eight, right now, 8 o'clock to 9.25 p.m. Eastern Time. Every $50 you spend at checkout gets you an entry. Ooh. The top five will get prizes. First place is going to get a briefcase choice. Sorry. Two briefcase choice briefcase. choices. Second place is going to get this hot wild Ooh. card of 80 tops Ricky Henderson. I like it. Rookie card. That's been exploding on the market. That is for second place. Third place is going to get a 500 high roller spot plus a 65 top baseball separate spot. Fourth will get a 250 high roller spot with a 65 separate spot. And fifth place will get an after party spot with a 65 top baseball separate spot. 
Top five are going to get prizes for every fifty dollars you spend at checkout. You're going to get in. It's on the grid. First place is going to get two briefcases. That is an awesome bonus for fifty dollars. Get wild. I think I think we need to take a look and because I don't think you guys realize the the value wild of briefcases. Wow, 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 wow. So guys, think about it. You spend fifty bucks. Let's say you win. You get a choice of two briefcases. What's in those briefcases? <laughs> oh, a 67 top starter set with a Rod Carew rookie, Hank Aaron, Whitey Ford, 300 cars in that. That's awesome. A platinum ticket, which basically gives you... F Wait, a platinum ticket? Oh, yeah. A platinum ticket. By the way, guys, that gives you free reign on anything on the website. One spot on anything you want. Doesn't matter about the cost. Platinum ticket. You've hit the jackpot. A seven hundred and fifty dollar break credit. That gives you a lot of entries into lots of goodies. A seventy nine tops baseball rack pack, gaggles of set break spots. But guys, a sixty seven top starter set, a platinum ticket to anything that you want on one spot on our website, and a seven hundred and fifty dollar break credit. Guys, this could legitimately be the best the best fifty dollars you've ever spent. Now. So, let's see. The $50 Wild Wild West bonus. So, there you go. Now until 925. So, just before we start to wrap up the show, I start to throw briefcases at Sam. Guys, I can't tell you how to spend your money, obviously. But I can encourage you to spend wisely. I mean, who else is giving away this cool stuff? Nobody else. But, you know, the, this logo above my head. Vintage Breaks. Value for your purchases, guys. I don't know. Just went live. Just went live? Why don't you go check? Let's see what's on the website. Okay. Maybe Todd's Okay. I, I had no idea. Let me, um, oh yeah, right there. Seven spots left. Guys, it went live yesterday. I had no idea. I, I 1980 tops basketball sealed PSA pack. There are currently seven spots left. If this can sell out tonight, I'm sure Sam would like to crack it. I'm sure he would love to go Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Dr. J hunting. So guys, this is now on this is on the website. There are seven spots left. I mean, I would love to go live for this. I'm sure Sam would love to crack this open and go for a little hunt of the bird magic rook. Bada 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 bird 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 there's the word. Yep, so guys, seven spots left on that. Okay. How's how'd the offline do? The offline was live before I left. One, five. Three spots left. What time did it have to close by? I believe it was eight PM. So what time is it? Eight oh seven. So it did not close. No. So I've just been hyping up the the last hour bonus. About about a wild wild west. Wild wild, wild Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just bought four spots into the eighty seven Fleer. About no, that's awesome. Let's say yes, you did. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll definitely we'll yeah you're close we can we can round that up. Hey, good for everything. Good for everything. 
taping it. You can't stick something with super glue, duct tape, or band aids, then you have a problem. Yeah, yeah. seriously. And I'm sure this. I'm sure the same rules apply in hospitals. Yeah. Then you just apply all three. That's right. <laughs> I got tape and staples. They they make it work. Exactly. Or super glue. Break out, the, glue. break out the stitches. Break out the super glue. You ready to go? Yep. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit. I'm gonna go back on the other side. Here comes S10 for the last hour and a half of our show. Oh, what's going on, everyone? All right. We gotta run some promos. Or we don't. We have no promos to run. Huh. How about that? What's up, Dion? Someone doesn't know what time I get out of work. Alright. You know what time it is, that maybe? What time is it? Time to buy another Top Shot moment. I think uh, you can register now. Grizzlies are playing, yes. Hello, Grizzlies. ESPN. I can't pull up NBA Top Shots. Hmm. What? Dude, no way. Every time. You're cursed, M80. I can't. even touch the, the thing. I mean, like, every time we talk about you signing up. That's true. <laughs> I thought my brother in law won't bring any more Ryder girls to, to the hockey games. So every time we go, they lose. Ken Graff set us down. The Ranger game. It was just my, like. My, my brother in law won't take any more uh, Ryder girls to the hockey games because then they do the, the Rangers lose. <laughs> I mean, my sister can't go to the hockey games. Oh, my, my niece can. She's a Walsh. <laughs> yeah, it's 5.03. Yeah, what? Dude. Top shots, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Announcements, let's see. We're making some changes. Nope, that's not it. <coughs> Update the current limits on person. <laughs> update. Website is currently down. We'll provide an update ASAP. Apologies for the inconvenience. They have no information. Okay, so they, they have no idea what's happening. Mm -hmm. They don't know why it's down. Good to know. All right, Grizzlies are already scoring. I like it. <laughs> Woo! That sounded like uh, woke you up. A little bit, a little bit. Brandon Clark? No way. Look, I didn't look at who scored. Is this is this gonna be a thing? Am I gonna be plagued with Brandon Clark every time we talk about the Grizzlies? Mm -hmm. It was D Bane. I don't know who D Bane is, but it was D Bane. Hmm. Desmond Bane. <laughs> Looks like he scored a three pointer. He scored another one. All right, D-Bane, let's go. Yes. You know what? I guess we're not talking about the Grizzlies here anymore. 
Sorry, Ja. Let's see. Breaks. Breaks. If someone wants to buy me a Brandon Clark jersey, we can make it happen. But trust me, my money will never be spent on a Brandon Clark anything. Mike Green said, get to work, Doug. He got the last 87 spot. Layton needs to get on that. Oh, my God. Wow. Congrats, Mike. Boop, 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 boop. What's going on, guys? This is our 1993 Topps Baseball First Series Wax Pack 137. Good luck. We got a 7. Alright. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Alright, that's the order of the break. John and I just got into a bit of a disagreement. That's all. A bit of a disagreement. Nothing to worry about. No, I uh, I just cut my thumb, so I had to throw a Band-Aid on it. Mess up his hair, that'll teach it. <laughs> That's good. I'm going to get John to sit down at some point tomorrow mm -hmm. on camera. I'm just going to walk up behind him and... <laughs> we got uh, spot one, Paul Sorrento. Brett Butler. In the middle of a set break. Mike Green, you're a genius. You're a genius. <laughs> Spot three, we got Kevin Campbell. He won't know when it's coming. It'll it'll be in the middle of a set break. Dougie, make sure you prep like three set breaks tomorrow. Oh, no, two are definitely going. That way, uh, you know. Lance Johnson, I need ample time to do it. Okay. We have Junior Felix, spot five. We have a gold Tim Nairing, spot six. Yes, absolutely. Spot seven, J Bell. Dougie, are we running any offlines right now? Um, we haven't, but so some people have spent. Um, I mean, I don't want Stephen Garrett to miss out. I mean, we definitely have enough purchases to. What time was it supposed to close? Initially, it was eight o'clock. Wasn't it like 7.40? It might have been. Then <laughs> Doug, you don't remember? You disappeared. All right. Stephen G, 7.08. Uh-huh. Yeah. So from 7.08, it was probably 7.45. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It didn't close. Right. No. That's 5, 6, 7. 7. Yeah. 7 out of 10? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's like 15. That's like 20 minutes of no sale. Yeah. No, it's it's not. 
Okay. Um, but you can start a new one with eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. All right. So you can start with Dion. Give Dion two spots. Ryan Wilbeck gets four. It's basically closed. Yeah. Uh, and then you can start the next one. Uh, it looks like Ken Graff will have spillage. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, spot eight. We got Tim Hullett. <clears throat> uh, we are doing that right now. Spot nine. We got Darren Lewis. Let me know who you're starting the, the next one yeah, with. Uh, Ken Graff. Ken Graff, how many spots? Two. Two? Okay, so then Mike Green is three. Yep. So we have seven left. Yep. Just make sure you announce it and what time it has to close by. Right. Spot 10, we got Jack Morris. Spot 22, Chris James. Spot 12, Mike Moore. Uh, Matthew, there's uh, 10 out of 100 running right now. Seven spots left. Yep. Currently, we got Ken Graff for two spots, Mike Green for one. Spot 13, we got Chuck Noblesh. Not block. I think mine sounded fancier. <laughs> it does sound fancy. That's not his last name. We got Wade oh. Boggs. Ah, you know what? That's up to interpretation. <laughs> when you got a name with that many letters, who knows? Spot 15, we got Brian McRae. And those packs didn't close, right? Because they had to close with the briefcase. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. That's number five because number four didn't close. Right? Well, technically it's number four. Cause... No, 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 it's, it, no, you're right, it's number five. Uh -huh. So just put in the chat, number four didn't close, and the 89 packs didn't close. So everyone knows. <whistles> Grizzlies, yes. Ja Morant putting up those points. Brandon who? Has not entered the game yet. No. Good. Maybe scare them. Good. They don't need him. Ken Graff, you're good, buddy. You're in the you're in you're in five and six, right? Oh, you're in whatever. You're in four and yeah. Yeah. No, Ken, you're good, bud. You are bueno. You're in the last one that we're gonna run, and you're. You kicked off the current one. All right, actually, give away. I'll give that one away right now. Okay. Why are we sighing? That's like a vi visible sigh. Like you, you <laughs> typed out S I G H. What's up? Uh, briefcase. Good luck. Seven. What's up? Do you want to go second year Jordan hunting? Yeah. I kind of think. I don't even feel like that's a question anymore. Seven. Ryan Wilbeck. Ryan Wilbeck, come on down, bud. On the seven, Ryan Wilbeck. You get to select a briefcase, my friend. Is Ryan Wilbeck in the chat? He usually there is. He is. Yeah, he just hides. You got it, man. Boop. 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 All right. Ryan Wilbeck's in.
We have that box, right? The white box, the white and blue box. Yeah, we showed them off uh, yesterday. Okay, I see it from here. Yes, let's close that. I also showed off the uh, eighty top fastball pack to your left. I saw that. Yeah, it's got seven. Spots. Yep, we have the box. I can break it. I can definitely break it. Emily, can you pass me the box, please? What? Uh, baseball shelf, middle shelf. Yep. It's the white and blue box. Yes. Yes. Nice yep. Thank you. Right. Guys, it's right here. 2020 Immaculate Baseball. We can pull Dominguez out of here. Bobby Witt Jr., Wander Franco. One spot remaining in this. I'm down. We can go bust this bad boy open. Yeah. Just like M80 busts my kneecaps open. <clears throat> Just like Emma steals your desk. No, it's not the same. Not the See, same. we're busting a box open, busting kneecaps Just open. Like, bust a cap in the knee. All right, let's go break something. Uh, I just did that. So let's do this. All right, Jaws, Jaws in it today, baby. He's three for four from the field. He's already got eight points. We are, we're zooming. It's 25-14. Memphis. Yeah. Guys, 2019 Panini Illusions Basketball Fat Pack 137 for Paul Don McNeely. Good luck, Paul. Oh yeah. That's a big pack. Timmy wants to know if he's in on promos. Oh, let me check for you. Will said he closed it. I don't know. Oh, he closed the box. Nice. Okay. Thank you, brother. We got that prepped. And this can be prepped. We got Jonas Valkunas, Danilo Galanare, Mark Gasol, Wendell Carter Jr. We got Living Legend, Chris Webber. Did John finally go home? Yes. Yes. Emily, did you ever go and make those keys? Uh, he'll be here all day tomorrow. Okay. I can, if there's, a, there's a key kiosk in Walmart, and I see Walmart 10 minutes from here. Gosh. Yeah, Not the one on Airstream, one more fun. No, no, I pass by it every day. Every day? You're just super familiar with it. I, I take 18 to get here, yeah. Draymond Green Orange. In fact, I think some of our championship belts have come from that same Walmart. Oh. Well, some of our keys are going to come from there, too. That's right. <gasps> They're going to be champion keys. <laughs> we have Steph Curry, Kevon Looney, Kemba Walker, Nikhil Alexander Walker.
I don't know if you heard, Emily. What? But on top of hiring your potential replacement, yeah. we might also get we might also hire another person for shipping. Nice. Huh? I know. I know. <laughs> Just a part timer, a couple days a week to help out. Yeah, it's because Emma and me are going to law school. <laughs> You and your stupid education. Jordan Poole, rookie. Stupid education. <laughs> I can have Dougie sign a piece of paper for you if you need a degree. <laughs> Daniel Gaffer, rookie. This here certifies that Emily Ryder can... Bust a kneecap. Bust a kneecap and also serve as a law. I mentally prepared myself for if anybody asks that question about my character from... Vintage Breaks. Because I put a lot of, I put the Vintage Breaks stuff in my law school interview. Uh -huh. And I put links to all to a bunch of the breaks that I've done or mm -hmm. stuff we've done. Nice. So I mentally prepared myself in case somebody actually watched your videos and heard you guys talk about breaking kneecaps. Like a spiel. What's your, what's your spiel? Go. It is, it, I've, ne I've never caused any harm to my coworkers. <laughs> it, is simply a, it is simply a running gag that That's we've had for, and the funny part about it was, when we first introduced that gag a couple months ago before we introduced our new website and it automated our emailing process, it actually, as soon as we started making that joke, you both started remembering to do the emails for a couple weeks. So, it may be, it may be violent, but it was effective in the short term. That's the reason we, uh, we started it. As a helpful reminder, Dougie. Thank you. Do you know? Yes. Okay. Just toss it. At his kneecap. <laughs> it's right there. Ah! Okay. I don't want to hit your desk and knock over our zipper. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Oh no. B. Clark got minutes. Oof. Oh no. Oof. Why are they giving him the <coughs> Under threat of having my kneecaps broken, I will attest to M80 not busting kneecaps. <laughs> 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 Woo! I like it. I like See, it. See, it's effective. It's effective. <laughs> and Charles is a smart man. Charles, I'm legitimately excited. I want to. I, I definitely want to see the, the police academy trivia tonight. Are you doing player? Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you press these these a couple days ago? Maybe two. Okay. My thing. What's going on, guys? 1987 Fleer Basketball Pack 149. Good luck to everyone in this break. We got a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Good luck, guys. Hello, IG Live. Welcome to this is 1987 Fleer Basketball Pack Break. We are looking for a second year Michael Jordan. This is my first time doing IG Live on my new phone. Looks amazing. You. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Spot one, we have a Kevin McHale sticker. Kevin McHale, Hall of Fame. Okay. Spot two, we have Jack Sigma.
Spot three, we have Jerry Sichting. Spot four, Dale Ellis. Spot five, we have Byron Scott. Spot six, we have Mark Eaton. Ooh, next card's actually a pretty decent one. Spot seven, we have Detlef Shrimp. That's Detlef Shrimp rookie card. Spot eight, we have Joe Dumars. Hall of Famer. Spot eight, we got Mike Sanders. Spot 10, we have Clyde Drexler. Second year, Clyde Drexler. Hall of Famer. Very nice. Spot 7, Ralph Sampson. Spot 12, Larry Drew. <laughs> Sean Dooley. Spot 13, we got Tree Rollins. Last card in the pack, guys. Jordan, but got a couple Hall of Famers in this pack. Very nice. All right, thank you guys. All right, guys, that was 1987 Fleer basketball pack. Thanks, guys, for watching. Stay tuned for more of these cool pack breaks from here at VB. Can you give us an update on the offline, please? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Doug, you might want to make sure you have enough time for our free seconds. Yeah. Got my, uh... Stuff is gone. Got it. Huh? It's gone. 87? Yeah, no, my green got blasted off. Yeah. Yeah. You told us before. Is Top Shots back up? Yes! All right, quick. I mean, Top Shots is up. Now is no, your time. I'm not going to touch that until after you buy your slot. <laughs> okay. All right. Now is your time, though. Time is up. Time is up. All right. Where, what moment? What moment do we want? Uh...
That Tatum assist is now ten dollar. Oh, that's a steal, gimme. Sixteen. All right, that's still fine. That's still good. All right, I bought my moment. I mean, <laughs> Tatum, come to Papa. We have temporarily disabled signing up for new accounts. Oh. What the heck? Uh, Again, uh, top. It's not signing up for people who want. It was not before. It's a, it, the website's functioning. It's just not for you creating see. new accounts. Top shots. What are you doing? You know they they give rewards. Well, not rewards really. They give you like stupid points, but they get, like they encourage people to like tell people to sign up. Yeah. And then they don't. Allow people to sign up. It's such bull poop. I'm in a drought. We're in a drought. Bull poop. Maybe love, maybe the server can't handle more users. I was reading. I think they're on like they're not. I don't think they have good servers. I was reading about it. They. I think they're using the same servers as they used for their first uh, NFT venture, Crypto Kitties. Yeah. So I think their servers are running top, NBA Top Shots and Crypto Kitties. Oh. And NBA Top Shots right now is much more impactful. Yeah. Like it's huge. It's blown up. So now they have to. I think they've been trying to um, convert the data to new servers without disrupting anything. Remember, we had to, we had to upgrade our servers. Yeah, we had to go down for it too. We had to shut our site down. Yep. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I wasn't touching that until you got your spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching it with a 39 and a half foot pole. Nice. My Kawhi moment from the Rising Stars just is about to hit 300. Nice. I'm still holding it. I think it can go higher. I want to buy the Rising... I want to buy the Giannis Rising Star moment, but I don't want to spend... Four ninety four. Oh yeah. Cause like I'm not gonna sell my Giannis moments. All right, we should break something. There's a snake in my boot. So, guys, how do you feel about uh, the NBA playoffs? Do we all feel like we know what eight teams are going to be there? Eight teams, right, Doug? Or is eight it six? Teams each, each, do, we, yeah. do we feel like we know what eight teams are there? I feel like I have a pretty good idea. Give me, give me your playoff picks, Dougie. This guy. I always say Jackie Robinson. I know it's not. Yes, yes. How many participants do we have? Really? Yep. Today, that's the first With, like, the requirements. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sending pictures of Jordan's vintage race hat, which is really cool. And our person's going to do that. Like, yeah, so cool. Nice. 
Guys, uh, when does that end, M80? I believe it ends at the end of the month. Yeah, end of the March. month? End of March. Yeah. Guys, uh, you know we have a Vintage Breaks Kids tournament running right now, right? With uh, the prize being this beautiful 55 Hank Aaron SGC 4.5. We want to jumpstart a kid's collection with this beauty. Uh, very hard to acquire. So we thought, you know, why not give it to a kid? If you want your kid to participate in the tournament... M80, how can they participate? Nice and loud. You're in the back. Sure. So in order to participate in the tournament, it is ages 16 and under. So you would take a picture with your child, either drawing a picture of the Vintage Breaks logo, or a printout of the Vintage Breaks logo, or you have the Vintage Breaks t-shirt. You just have to have the Vintage Breaks logo in the picture. You know, maybe with your cards and your kids. Um, send it to vbshipping459 at gmail.com. And we'll, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll have Ben make a collage of all the photos, and we're going to pick a winner. That's right. Guys, we don't have many participants right now, so... Right now, we have two. Okay. Right now, we have two participants in the kids' uh, in the kids promotion. One of those two kids is going to take home this SGC 4.5 Hank Aaron. Being in previous tournaments does not make it eligible for this one. You have to send the picture. That's right. You have to send the picture to... Shipping 459 at gmail.com. At gmail.com. It's your child with a picture of the picture of the Vintage Breaks logo, either hand drawn or otherwise, for a chance that. Uh... Yep, and it's going to go on a, a VB collage. So if you want, if you want, you can, you know, be in the picture with your kid. Selfie or just the kid? Uh, it could be you and your kid. Uh, just, you know, has to include the VB logo. We want to make sure this goes to a kid. So yeah, we want to make sure this goes to a kid uh, who's, like, you know, really going to appreciate it. Um, and we hope that, you know, you guys better put my kids to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just want to, you know, we want to jumpstart uh, a kid, uh, you know, a kid's uh, collection. Um, you know, the kids are the collecting future. Yes. We want to make sure the hobby stays alive and strong. Uh, and we know that car that Hank Aaron is going to only get harder and harder to acquire, uh, you know, as time goes on. Three picks for three kids or one pick for all three kids? Uh, Brian, one entry per household. Yes. One entry per household. Okay. Um, uh, fur babies don't count. Fur babies don't count. Cats and dogs do not count. No goldfish. No goldfish. No snakes. Uh, ferret, maybe. We can we can talk. I kind of like ferrets. That's an S10. Uh, that, He's got a, you know. Uh, I can, I, there, there's some wiggle room around ferrets. I'm joking. It's a joke. My kid is only two, so doubt he'd appreciate it now. You know, you could jumpstart his collection, Wiz. Listen, my daughter's three and pulled a Michael Jordan. I mean, that's that, right. And he's more happy how you reacted. Yes, <laughs> I think she was. You start screaming. She's like, ah! <laughs> I did something right. I did something right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that card, that card went to a card saver like ASAP. Yeah, no problem, guys. Yeah, make sure uh, you know. Uh, 66 tops Batman red pack 17 good luck guys That's a six One two three four five and six Dougie that's how I know your mustache is coming along because when you were holding that up I was like, are you putting your face on your face? My face on my face. I yeah. was I was so confused. There are people who do that. Yeah. All I do is like shave my head like half bald and I'm really like whole throat. <laughs> my green. <laughs> you can borrow one of my kids. By borrow, I mean take. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we have a buy sell trade, but that's not what it's for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's the offline? Any takers? I'll take one more if need be. Uh, Dougie, can we have an update on the offline, please? Yeah. Let's 
Still three spots left. Three spots remaining. Guys, three spots left in the offline. That can definitely close, guys. Sean Dooley, that is a great question. I think that's okay. Yes. As long, you know, uh, uh, you know, we take it, we take it that it's going to go into her collection. Um, I think that's okay. Uh, I can find out, Sean Dooley. Um, I'll shoot a text. Let's see. Sixteen and under, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't gonna make it anything inappropriate to make a political joke. Okay. Sorry, I that down. Probably typed that wrong, but whatever. Wiz, uh, I th uh, can you just put it in the chat? Yeah. Thank you. Is it a rookie card? I'm sorry? Is it a rookie card? I don't think so. Just put, uh, yeah, just put uh, 55 tops, Hank Aaron. No, I think that's second year, Hank Aaron. 54, I believe, is his rookie. Oh, these are pretty well centered. Spot one for William Hash. We have Death Spins a Web. Yeah, those Batman cards are awesome. This one looks... Dude, this one almost looks DNC. That looks incredible. Uh, we're only looking... At, we're, you know, if you're looking to grade any of these, you want something that's like... Beautifully centered and uh, Donald Montier. This looks real sharp, man. Donald, dynamite in Robin's nest. Just look at that centering, Donald. That's incredible. Mike Green. <laughs> you see that? He's like, one reason I hide with the BB crew. <laughs> Spot three out on a limb. Uh, Mike, we, we love you, bud. Spot four. This one's just a tad off. Facing the axe. Spot five, Menace in Fairyland. Love those cards. They're so nice. Yeah. They're all based on the original art that, you know, it's not done like that today. Yeah. Oh, is it Immaculate Baseball you're looking Oh, at? yeah. It's coming up next. Hmm, very interesting. <laughs> I didn't mention it when I was here earlier. Oh, uh, why, why would I? <laughs> I don't know. I understand. I think you might have to go check the owl out. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to announce a really cool $100 bonus promo. Oh. Doug eats the next 20 entries. Must close by 9.30 is a Reggie Jackson single sign baseball authenticated by JSA. And um, it's the next 20 at a hunch. Okay. Must close by 9.30. One person will win the Reggie single sign baseball. Very cool. Guys, 
20 in a hunch. Um, all you got to do is spend $100 at VintageBreaks.com and you're going to get a shot at this Reggie. Uh, it's just the Reggie, right, uh, Dougie? Just the Reggie. Gotcha. Yep. The wrapper is worth a uh, pretty penny also, Sam. Oh, yeah, absolutely, brother. Uh, that's why we use all our wrappers for, you know, uh, charity auctions. We, uh, we have a separate bin for all the wrappers. Yep. Huh, that's a good argument. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Oh, so Sean's on. Remember your idea earlier? throwing the gator oh no 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 whatever he comes up with is fine funny come on that's funny. nah it's, it's nah whatever he I don't wanna oh, come on I, nah uh, I mean yes uh I'm sure it's cool Sean Dooley I'm just waiting on the official ruling I don't think he's seen his phone yet oh, okay. Sean I would just you know have your niece take a picture with the BB logo. I think it. I think it'd be okay, brother. I can't see why not. Yeah, I can't see why not. I mean, you definitely deserve it. I mean, there's some ench there's some information on the Hank Aaron card. Oh, okay. I was like that semi. I was like Nightbot. What is that? A paragraph? Like. <laughs> I was like, who lets you out of your cage, Nightbot? <laughs> For those on YouTube who can't see the rest. There you go. Dougie offline? Closed? Still three spots. Okay, what time do they have to close by, though? 8.50. All right, guys. <laughs> okay. I like it, Sean. I like it. Uh, guys, uh, the uh, the 10 and 100 had to close at 8.50. Okay, it's 8.55 right now. You have until 9 to close it. There's three spots remaining. If it doesn't close by 9... It's going to expire. There's three spots left in the 10 and 100. George Cedar said he'll take two. Okay. So if George Cedar's going to take two, we need somebody to get one more. That's right. Guys, teamwork makes the dream work. 2020 Panini Immaculate Baseball Box 22. Good luck, guys. We got a six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Good luck, guys. Yeah, good luck, everyone. Be your side if you will make an appearance in the comments. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm waiting for things to escalate. Where, like, Ben's calling the powers to be <laughs> for help, and then I pull out the gator glass. It's the Gator Gladiator. Oh, Dougie, you see what uh, George Cheater closed up?
right, George, I'm going to get that prep. Remember, Gator was attack Gators. Just asking for better ones. Yep. <laughs> Gator has attack Gators. Just ask that Florida Wendy's. <laughs> Oh, yeah, FV, set breaks don't happen the uh, same night. Yeah, we got to prep it and everything. It's, yeah. It takes a little bit. Might be tomorrow. No promises, though. Thirty-five of forty-nine. Giancarlo Stanton. Oh, we have one of one. Oh. Casey Stangle. Oh. Patch. Okay. Look at that. For Mark Ferreira. One of one. Nice. Casey Stangle. So for the ten and a hundo. Yeah, so, what happened? So George Teeter closed it. Bill Zellner also purchased. Okay, so give. Just start another one. Okay. And let, uh, and tell Bill everyone Zell what's going on. And Bill Zellner will, will pick it up. So right. let Bill know. Okay. You got twenty minutes. Twenty five minutes. I think everything closes at uh, nine twenty five. We have sixteen of ninety nine. Throws one, two, three inning in debut. Brian Abreu, rookie debut. That is a uh, RPA. Brian Abreu? Yep. Hmm. All right. I know the name, not the, what the last name. Spot three for William Zeltner. That looks like a cool card. We have 25 of 31. Xander Bogertz. Patch Auto. I'm assuming he's a Red Sox. Yeah, he's a Red Sox. We have 20 of 49. Sheldon News, Patch Auto. Spot six, we have 11 of 49. Jordan Yamamoto, Patch Auto. Like you keep us updated on that promo because okay. they're going to have 25 minutes. Yeah. Alright, we're going to give away some briefcases away, guys.
All right, guys, this is for a briefcase. Good luck. Yes, sir. No problem, my friend. Matthew Townsend did not move wow. from spot number one. Matthew Townsend, you get a briefcase, brother. Uh, please answer, Timothy. Matthew Townsend, please select a briefcase, brother. Tim, you spent 75. You got to spend 100 at checkout. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. So Tim, it, go ahead. Don't okay, so if you spend twenty five more, we'll, we'll put take you the, on. We'll we'll get you in for the last uh, briefcase bonus. But that has to close. But it has to close. It hasn't closed. Well, there, we only have one spot in it so far. Right. Yeah. Let me see. I'm to check out these promos real quick. Make sure we're not behind on anything. Today is the 10th. So, how's that Reggie Jackson ball looking? No movement. Um, what was it, Doug? 20 and 100? 20 and 100. Has when, to close by the end of the show. When did it start? Uh, nine. When Layton. So... I think it started before nine, but... You want to get set up if then... George Teeter. And yeah. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I mean, you know, I don't think it's going to close. Okay. Uh, that'll run until 925. All right, so I think we're good on promos. That's fine. All right. Any of you guys want to online for a last very uh, That's right. Every fifty dollars you spend, you get a chance at two briefcase choices. That one is on the grid. Uh, One, two, three, four. four. Which I well, actually, five because Matthew doesn't Matthew pick. Matthew has to pick one, right? Oh, six, yes. Let me take five of those off. Uh, you got it, Matthew. Oh, there he is. Yep, fifty dollar is on the grid. The last, uh, the fifty dollar. So you're in on that. But if you spend twenty five dollars more. We'll put you in for the, uh, the last one. What's going on, guys? 1977 Top Star Wars First Series, Pack 63. 
Good luck to everyone in this bad boy. <laughs> we got an eight. Looking for that number one loop. Loop. Five, six, seven, eight. All right, guys. Have a good night. That's the order of the break. Good luck. Hey Timothy, uh, it sounds like there's a you know a miscommunication, brother. Uh, you can call the office. Dougie can walk you through it. Dougie, please put the office number in the chat. You can uh, give the office a call. Dougie will walk you through it, brother. All right. Good luck, guys. You guys are talking about two different promos, Timothy. Um, we're not going to go back and forth with you in the chat, brother. Uh, it would be best for you to call the office. You're not understanding. But Dougie has no problem walking you through it. It's our pleasure. I just shimmy it out. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, George Cheater. When it didn't, when the cover didn't pop off, I got a little nervous. And then I was like, I think I can just pull it out nice and uh, easy. Like a surgeon cutting for the very first time. Nice. Look at that. George Cheater, I know it's got a little gum stain on the back, but that's a you know that's not too shabby centering nice. on that uh, that Princess Leia sticker. Oh, nice! It's pretty solid, brother.
spot two. Cornered in the labyrinth. Joshua, look at the centering, Joshua. Dude, this looks so nice. Uh, PSA 8? PSA 8. Look at that centering. Spot three, we have who will win the final Star War. Oh, yeah, that card easily looked like it was DNC. Oh, yeah, that card was easily DNC. Yeah, no, the pack was greater than an eight. Yeah. Dude, these cards are very well centered. Spot eight, or sorry, spot four. Steel walls close in on our heroes. Grade Leia, yeah, man. Whew. Spot five. This this pack is so good. Oh yeah? This pack is so centered. Nice. So centered. <gasps> Spot five, we have Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill. Ha <laughs> George Teeter, the whole pack is well centered, man. Yeah. Coincidentally, too, that came out of a PSA slab, so that's even better. Spot six, we have Luke checks out his new droid. Spot seven, we have hunted by the sand people. <sighs> Last card in the pack, spot eight. We have Luke prepares for battle. This does have some wax residue on the surface. A little off left to right. But you can get that wax off with a little uh, pantyhose action. All right. Uh, that was our 77 Top Star Wars First Series Pack 63. Thank you, guys. Can we send them all for grading? Yep, George Teeter. Um, you're aware of the price adjustments that Gem Mint made um, due to PSA raising their prices, right? Uh, George Teeter got one. He got four. He got five. And he got All right, sounds good, brother.
All right. So guys, nine more spots in six more minutes, guys, if you want to get the last briefcase. Dude, so many. Let's check out Grizzlies. Halftime. Jazz got... Jazz only got 11 in the half. Yeah, but you know how quick you can score. Dude, it's so weird. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Anything can happen. And then the Spurs are up by three right now against uh, Dallas, which is early. Yeah. <sighs> yeah Dow There's no way Dallas loses that game. There's no way. I would be shocked. I would be shocked if they lost that one. I mean, I know San Antonio is a decent team. Sure. But Dallas is at home. And, you know, they have Luka. <laughs> Who's got four points, eight boards, and seven assists. Right? Yeah, there's no way, dude. It's just a triple-double machine. How much? All right, guys, four minutes left in those promos, and then we're going to run them. Dougie, how are we looking on our offlines? Still no movement. Nine spots left in the uh, 10 and 100 for a briefcase. 16 spots left in the 20 and 100 for the Reggie baseball. All right, uh, guys, if we want to close those out, we need to do it in the next four minutes. We got to close these bad boys. Is there any interest at all? So, Dougie. Sammy. How are you today? Doing fantastic. How are you? Gonna, good, good. Going to go home and uh, tune into VB West? Uh, for Police Academy Trivia? Yeah. Nice, nice. We got a big day tomorrow, Dougie. I know. We got a whole day of messing with Ben. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> you got you to gotta get your... Um... I gotta get my pitching arm ready. Your throw, your um, not just you know, your pitching arm, but your uh, mini fridge throwing arm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I like to you know shock, shock bolt it. I mean, we're, I mean, we're past briefcase throwing now. Oh yeah, no briefcases are for amateurs. We we don't we don't throw briefcases. We throw mini fridges. We throw mini fridges. Only eight spots left in that 96 Bowman's Best Basketball box. Hmm. Might have to bounty that tomorrow. That, that, I want to break that. Let's see. We got 2003 Upper Deck. Prospects Basketball. Go LeBron hunting. We have 2020 Donruss basketball, right? I feel like I've seen that. It's got Anthony Edwards on it. I think I'm looking at it. No, that's cert. Oh, I'm not sure. Here in Buffalo, we like to throw people through tables just tossing well, it. Well, I mean, that that's because you're Bill's Mafia. I, I think Ben could go through the breaking table. <laughs> and then we'll just have him go buy a new one. Go buy a new one yeah. at Walmart. Ben, get up. <laughs> Go buy a new break. Right. Hey. Come on, dust yourself off dust there. Dust yourself uh, off. Hood ornament. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. We have 2007 Topps Chrome Basketball? Dude, how are we not closing that? I don't know. Dude, that's Kevin Durant, rookie. Kevin Durant, white refractor rookie. Dude, that card's going to go up as we get closer to playoffs. That's that's a good box. 
Only one fifty a spot. Hmm? Doug, you might have to borrow. I might have to borrow your credit card. Okay, only if I can borrow yours though. Uh, sure, sure. I'll give you, I'll give you all the canceled ones. Okay. I'll give my library card. Oh, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Timothy, no problem, man. Make him be the table. Mike Green's a genius. Put Ben through the table. Because he is the table. Because he is the table. Brilliant. 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 Uh, Charles, it's called hazing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, Tim, you're in. So you're the second entry. Uh, I don't know if it's going to close, though. So there's eight entries left. In the... Hundred, hundred dollar. Ten and a hundred. Ten and a hundred. Guys... Eight spots left in the 10 and 100 that had to close by now. Does anyone have interest? Anyone? Anyone at all? Because we have to give away two briefcases. All right. Here's what we'll do. Timothy, uh, Timmy K is new. Uh, William Z uh, got beat out on the last one. Timmy K, William Z, I hope you guys can hear me loud and clear. Hope you guys are still on. I know Timmy's on. Yes. Um, I'm going to take your two spots. And tomorrow, when I do the first 10 and 100, you guys are going to be in it. Oh. Okay? Nice. Because this one did not close. And I cannot extend it. I have to give promos away. Yep. Um, but out of the kindness of my heart, yes, I'm starting the I'm starting tomorrow's promo with you guys, Dougie. Please put that in the chat for, so it's on the record. Yep. No problem, brother. No problem. All right. I try. I try to do my best, guys. All right. All right, so I'll basically just leave this up like there and I'll be yep. for tomorrow. There he is. All right, guys, this is for the. Actually, let me do this on random.org. Let me do this on random. Uh, Number one Periscope fan here. Nice. Thank you for watching. Okay. All right, good luck, guys. Well, pre oh, Rubberneck. What's up, Rubberneck? Yeah. Three. Two. No problem. It's my pleasure. I just want to make sure you guys are taken care of. Three. All right. So, Juggy, first place, got two briefcases. Right? George Teeter. George Teeter wow. gets two briefcases. Second place got... Ricky Henderson? Yeah, it's on the grid. Let me, uh... Second place, Matthew Townsend taking home the Ricky Henderson rookie. No, not twice, just once. Third place. So third place is a five hundred dollar high roller spot. So third place is Ken Graf. Actually, third, fourth, and fifth are Ken Graf. Oh, nice! Yeah. Wow, Ken Graf cleaned up on the. <laughs> I don't. I don't know the grade, Matthew. All right. And three sixty five spots. Okay. For Ken Graf. Okay. Ken, just give me. 
I will do those as soon as I can for you. You got it, George Cheater. And All right. 18 is great. I think that's it for right. We yep. Uh, we can start giving those away. All right, number three, Mr. Tita. All right. All right, hold on, and let me put this Matthew's name on this. Yeah. All right. Alright, number three. Briefcase number three for George Teeter. Love the atmosphere. You guys, guys have been great explaining. It's just a lot going on at quick. Yeah, absolutely, Timothy. Yeah, it's no problem. Alright. George Teeter, you're getting a gaggle, but George, you're getting an exclusive briefcase wheel spin. Nice. Those will be happening on Friday live. So, George, congratulations. You are the newest person getting an exclusive briefcase wheel spin. Congratulations, George. Good picking on that. Uh, Look forward to that on Friday, I brother. Know. First time ever. First time ever. Ever! Sure to be great. Yeah. All right, number What's, four. For no. Dion in New Zealand. Dion, number four. Send that Henderson in the briefcase. I want one of those wheels. <laughs> we got a gaggle for Dion. Dion getting one free spot in each of these. That's for you, Dion. Seven. Number seven. Eight. Number seven for Victor. Good luck, Victor. Victor getting a gaggle. Victor, one free spot in each of those, Victor. Dougie gets everyone hyped about everything. Yeah. Number eight. Briefcase number eight for Matthew. Matthew Townsend. Matthew Townsend getting a gaggle with an exclusive briefcase wheel spin. Matthew. Nice. There it is, buddy. You're getting a wheel spin on Friday. Matthew, what it is right now. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know either. All right, Tom O'Connor, number nine. Tom O'Connor. Tom O'Connor taking home a gaggle with an exclusive briefcase wheel spin. Nice. Tom O'Connor. Tom O'Connor. Having himself a heck of a 24 hours. Yeah. Ryan Wilbeck coming up. Number 15. That's now Doug's theme song when he calls me. <laughs> That's great. Spot 15. I can just imagine you calling him for a briefcase. What it is, man. Oh, God. Ryan Wilbeck. Taking home a gaggle. Ryan Wilbeck. All right, I need you to just chill, dude. <laughs> All right, number 18, the last briefcase. Briefcase 18 for George Teeter. George Teeter taking home a 2019 Topps Chrome. Update Mega Box. Oh, that's for you, George Heater. All right. Congrats, brother. All right, guys, that's our show. 
Uh, but if you're not satisfied, we have VB West taking over. Charles. Tonight is uh, Police, Police Academy, Academy Trivia. Trivia. Wait, a VB West? Yeah. yeah. That's a great idea. That's yeah. a great... I may race home just to hear <laughs> Police that. Academy. I love Police Academy. So guys, stay tuned well, for VB West. Win? Uh, I don't uh, think so. I don't <laughs> Wait, All if right. you can win, I want to win. All right, guys. Have a wonderful evening.